the community's concerns were addressed. I was also really struck by one of the statistics that you shared with me around the two Superfund sites that are gonna take like four to 6,000 years to clean up, like in terms of remediation. So just how urgent it is uh, to begin uh, to uh, safeguard the health of this community through the changes that you're proposing. So just thanks to the staff and my second of the motion by um, Caroline Jones. So I want to, I just have a comment before we move forward, if that's okay. You asked for questions, not comments. Oh. <laughs> comments, welcome. <laughs> so um, I also want to commend the staff for just incredible work and, um, you know, the partnership with the community is very clear given the comments by the neighborhood council and the council office as well as other input that we got in our materials. So. Um, it really is um, uh, inspiring, I think, to um, see the work that's been done and, and see the new code in action. You know, I really uh, appreciate, you know, got a really deeper appreciation. We've seen it in other plans, but this really brought home to me the uh, beauty of that flexibility and really p doing real planning, you know, as the commission at the time was saying when that uh, process was happening. Um, and what really I want to say is that I had a conversation with um, <clears throat> General Manager Bertoni uh, this morning about how do you do planning in this environment? You know, we are living in a time that is incredibly dynamic in terms of change, and it's hard for us to predict what is going to happen, you know. I mean, we got, I don't know, was it 11 inches of rain um, this week, uh, you know, which is our usual yearly total, close to. Um, but what strikes me is that the way to really deal with climate change is to really think about people because people, if you do what's good for people, you do what's good for the environment. And I feel like this plan is really an evolution in that way, really considering um, the human element and the importance of planning and prioritizing residents in a community. And, you know, uh, making it more walkable, uh, more trees, uh, less um, industrial exposure. Um, so, um, you know, I, I just hope that, you know, this kind of thinking continues to infuse not just the planning staff, but all of us here as we think about how to plan communities that really will support us in surviving this crisis that we're in, um, you know, so that, uh, you know, we can look to live, you know, long lives and not, you know, experience this, these crazy um, climate uh, impacts. So I, you know, am extremely supportive of what's been done here. Commissioner Learn, you have a further comment? Great, before we take a vote, I also want to just acknowledge all the uh, contributions of residents um, and of people who work here. I, it, it is a hard balance to try to f strike a balance and I want to um, echo what Commissioner Max said that uh, this proposal kind of centers residents and um, looks at kind of the environmental injustice in the past and tries to create a path forward um, that acknowledges what is existing use. Um, there's grandfathering that's taking place, but that there's a pathway to think about how do we bridge the reality that people live adjacent to these industrial uses and their health impacts. So um, I know there's a lot of public comment on um, kind of the, the oil, um, oil and gas drilling ordinance and the statement of overriding consideration. Um, and I wanna kinda commend the planning department for using this plan um, and connecting it to citywide policy that will continue to improve um, and be better enforced and that it has impacts in this specific community plan and that there's a pathway between future changes that will happen and, and try to 
kind of anchor uh, what is the reality of, of this community plan right now. So um, kind of given that, I, I, I support where this is going and I thank everyone who's coming out knowing that all the comments that were made, like it, not every issue is addressed and this is a, a balance that I think really centers equity and, and prioritizes um, environmental justice and, and long-time residents. Very well said. Um, so let's uh, proceed, Commissioner Cho. I believe you Good. have a um, motion. Excuse me. You may want to. Okay. I just want to make sure we clear. Uh, we have the motion clarified. I couldn't hear the whole motion. So. Oh yes. Well, I will say the motion again. This is Caroline Cho. I'd like to make an, a motion to approve staff's recommendation along with this uh, technical modifications. Okay. There was also a. Um, there was a conversation from, from the council member about something that he was going to propose at council, and I, I don't think that was something separate, I believe, but um, there is also a letter in the, in the record from the council member regarding a specific change to the text um, to um, program, small business assistance program, um, program 24. I'm just, just, just curious if that's part of the motion or not, if you've had an opportunity to take a look at that. Yes, that, that came in uh, this morning, early this morning. Hopefully commissioners had a chance to review that and I would be in support of, of including the council members' um, uh, actions desired. It's Caroline Cho, I, I will amend my um, motion to include the... If, uh, if I may interject, please, I apologize. We're, um, Chris Rapini, for the record, we're, the, the plan has language to support the council member's motion, and we're happy to include that language, uh, revised language, in our um, in our in, in our uh, policy document. Yeah. If you include that as part of your motion, so, we I, believe I'll add that works. as part of my motion. The small business assistance programs, program 24, as well. Deputy City Attorney uh, Commissioner Cabildo, do you, as a seconder on the motion, agree with that amendment? Yes, I agree with the amendments. Ceci, we have a motion. Cecilia Lamas, for the record. Second, please. Commissioner Cho? Yes. Commissioner Cabildo? Yes. Commissioner Learn? Yes. Commissioner Mack? Yes. Commission Vice President Zamora? Yes. Commission President Lachey? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. At this point, I'm closing item number six. Um, let's take a let's take a five minute break before we start up again. Thank you. The time is eleven twenty three a.m. <laughs> I thought you were coming to me. <laughs> Yes, we were going to say something. I thought, I thought Sean was going to say something. Yeah, this is his last time. Oh, my oh, goodness. Goodness. I know. 
I don't know. No, no, no. He's definitely. So yesterday I had a meeting with the new distiller here. Hi, Commissioner Lydia uh, Avila. You know her? Really? She's not going to. She used to work with me. That's right. Yeah. Well, now I know. I so okay. So I told you this story. One of my favorite stories. Um, it's about Eli. We were the first time. Yeah, I heard the first time. And we were well, nice. We did the four, you know, quadrants. And Eli had done some. Like station and this that we did. Rogelio Flores, who's great, was our planner for it. So Rogelio did all these stations, put them through, planners there. And they went to, we did the exact thing, same thing, four weeks in a row. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? So the first one is they checked everything else. Can you hear me? I was at, she said, definitely check it. All the numbers. That again. The red shirt. Report cards, and they had to judge every station. A, B, C, D, F, right? And so they came up, I don't know who it was. Now I know who it was. She came up to me afterwards and she goes, hey, oh, uh, nice to meet you. I looked at her and said, no, I'm okay. What do you need? I said, oh, don't worry about it. We're having a good time. Oh, it's right here. I'm just saying, I'm totally used to Caesar D's. I get it. I'm not afraid of these. I'm not afraid of these at all. And I always told the story, I had no idea who the person was. And now I found out who it was her. It's the same song. I told her the story. She was my first time. She was the one who was the one. So, she remembers the best thing. I was laughing because I don't I want to connect super help, but to were super helpful. So that I can call separately. There, there was, it was really helpful. So I was told when I call people, really people and I'm unconnected, yeah. because it helped me we try to rethink our work. Community engagement to have a train of file. And the report cards were great because it's not right. So, so I'm not even sure why it's It's data. And so there's some interesting things about it, though, too, because the ones who were fluent speakers of Spanish didn't necessarily score all of them. All right, well, it's a mystery. Sit there and be very engaged. They didn't give an A. It's because everyone there was large and small Spanish speakers. But you had like. And I want for him to have uh, clean skies, clean air to breathe, and uh, a place to play that's not crowded with uh, jets. And I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Evelyn Gray. And then I'm going to call an another few names. You can just come up and get in line. Fran Petaski, Jared Negron, Laura House. Hi, good morning. What name Hi, did you sign morning, up under? Everyone. Thank you so much. My name is Evelyn Gray. All right, I'm Evelyn. I'm going to read my comments. Evelyn, real quick, which items would you like to I'm, be heard on? Uh, I'm talking, I'm, I think it's one, two, and three. All right, you have two minutes. Go Thank ahead. Thank you. Uh, I live in Lake Balboa. I bought my home in 2011. I'm asking this wonderful committee to pass motion 23-1339 as is without amendment. I'm also asking that the ill-fated Bonsef Helenet proposal be rejected with no contractual rights granted. The city cannot approve any more development that do not include mitigation members to reduce the toxic fumes harming us from Van Nuys Airport. Uh, I'm really disturbed by the increase in jet noise and fumes. Sometimes I feel like I, would, I can't light a match outside in my yard because the fumes are so bad. Um, I'm also furious that it's become a commercial airport that I can go on my phone and buy a ticket from to any to uh, Aspen uh, places that I personally can't afford to travel to I'm not in the one percent but um, what's going on there needs to be curbed and I yield the rest of my time thank you thank you so much next speaker come on up which name did you sign up under Adam Alvarado 
All right, Adam, which items would you like to be heard on? Yeah, uh, I believe it's also the two, uh, two, one, and three there. All right, you have two minutes. Go okay, ahead. Sounds good. Okay, my name is Adam Alvarado. I'm an operator for aircraft appearance services out of Van Nuys. And uh, I understand that uh, the folks outside of the gate don't understand, you know, the complexity of not allowing the uh, airport uh, land use to be utilized for aviation use. And this is for the new, for the new proposal. So that is very imperative. So any type of uh, environmental <clears throat> improvements, any type of uh, also economic uh, prosperity there with the, within the airport, it all lays with the uh, aviation land use. So that has to be approved. And I yield the rest of my time. Thank you so much. All right, can I have our next speaker come on up? Which name did you sign up under? Hi, my name is Jared Negron. I'm actually here on behalf of the Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council and their airport uh, committee. Okay. Uh, I would request, uh, since I am here on their behalf, that I am able to speak on all three as briefly as possible. Sure, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jared Negron. I'm here uh, speaking of, on behalf of the Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council. Um, thank you all, uh, members of the committee, for allowing us to be here today in Van Nuys to speak about something that's very important to us. Thank you uh, to the individual from CD4 for being here. And Imelda, thank you for being here and um, doing your best to support us. Your support is meaningful, extremely important, and it is extremely necessary in what we are trying to accomplish. Um, there's a lot of folks here today who have a vested interest in the financial success of the Van Nuys Airport. I and my community are um, some of those. I'm assuming it's a little bit easier for many people here um, who uh, have leases at the airport to take time out of the middle of the workday uh, to show a good amount of force, but for the primarily working class individuals in this community, myself included, it is an extreme inconvenience to have to take time out of your workday to come and speak to the city to be let you know what we are uh, facing. So again, I appreciate you being here. As at uh, many Brown Act compliant meetings of the Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council, the Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council and its airport committee has heard regular feedback from its constituents regarding the impacts and issues caused by the Van Nuys Airport. We have made multiple efforts to work in concert with LAWA, Paul Herrera, and Van Nuys leadership and have been met with nothing but resistance. Um, before I go any further, I'd like to be clear that the Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council's official position does not seek to close the airport. We recognize its economic importance to the community, the state, and the country, as you mentioned earlier, and we are currently frustrated with its detrimental impact environmentally and to our health in the community. That is what our focus is. In June of last year, the UCLA Health uh, Division published a Comprehensive Van Nuys Airport Health Impact Assessment, or HIA, there has been robust reporting from Reuters, the LA Times, CBS News, KCRW, and countless other reputable sources um, about the increase in air traffic since the pandemic and its detrimental health and environmental effects of propeller planes. Uh, do you mind if I'm I can continue? give you three more minutes? Go Thank ahead. you so much. Um, propeller planes and jets on communities surrounding the regional airports. Some of this can be detailed um, in the letter that I have sent on behalf of the Neighborhood Council to every council member. If you have not received it, please contact us and we will, get, we will get you a copy of that letter. Some of those detrimental health effects include the exposure to um, emissions from jet fuel that has been leaked to a range of negative health effects, particularly in children and pregnant women. And in Van Nuys, um, we are in the 94th percentile for pollution out of all census tracts in California. We are the 75th percentile in diesel emissions and we have above average rates of low birth weights. This can all be found in that UCLA health study. Much of this has been tied to the exposure to lead, uh, gasoline from propeller planes and jet fumes. It is because of all of this and the further items detailed in our letter that um, in accordance with our official positions at the Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council, we ask you to support Council Files 23-1338 and Council File 23-1339. And we also ask, in accordance with our official position at the Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council, that you do not support Council File 24-0125. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Negron. I'm going to call a couple of more names just so folks can come up and get in line. Maya Debus, Nicholas Edward, and Steve Brackett. Hey, good morning. What name did you sign up under? Laura House. Laura, um, which items would you like to be heard on? 3839 and Bonsef. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Thanks. Uh, hi, my name is Laura House. Uh, I live in Lake Balboa. This is uh, super scary uh, <laughs> to speak to you, but thanks for hearing us. Uh, I'm asking that the TTT committee uh, pass motion 23-1339 as is without amendment. 
I'm also asking that the ill-fated Bonsef uh, Helenet proposal be rejected uh, with no contractual rights granted. The city cannot approve any more developments that do not include mitigation measures to reduce the toxic fumes harming us uh, from the VNY. Uh, again, thanks for holding this and hearing us. It, it's a scary situation. Uh, I live really close to the VNY. I'm in Lake Bobo in the pocket, it's called. Uh, I am happy for business growth. I love money. I love commerce. I, I think we're all happy for, uh, you know, abundance to be happening. But in the past year or so, what they've been doing there has been flooding our neighborhood with fumes. And that's what we're upset about. Uh, all for growth, it raises property values, that's great. But uh, the fumes of the kind of out of control uh, upping what's happening there is my family feels it and smells it along with my neighbors, neighbors who are elderly, neighbors who have babies that they take for walks. Uh, essentially, and everyone in between those ages, essentially we're begging the people at the VNY to stop hurting our community with what they're doing with their unleashed growth, and for the city council members to step in and protect us, which you're doing here, which I, I appreciate. I appreciate the support, especially from um, Imelda uh, Padilla. Uh, business is great, uh, I agree, but I hope you agree that it's not great at the cost of our lives. So thank you. I yield my time. Thank you so much. If our next speaker could come on up, please. Tell me what name you signed up under. Uh, Fran Petowski. I live in North Hills West. Ms. Petowski, which items would you like to speak One, on? One, two, and three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. I'm asking the, TT, the, the committee to pass the motion on 23-1339, as is without an amendment. I'm also asking that the ill-fated Bonset helmet Proposal be rejected with no contractual rights granted. The city could not approve any more developments that do not include mitigation measures to reduce the toxic fumes harming us in Van Nuys. I live approximately one and a half miles northeast of the airport, and on occasionally, depending on the winds, the smell of jet fuel can be sickening. The roar of jets, the thickness noise from the helicopters, and the constant buzzing of prop planes is not acceptable. I am appalled that the City Council of Law have for years ignored the plight of the neighborhood residents and have been continuously affected by the toxic growth of the airport. Please pass motion 23-1339. Thank you, Imelda. And you know, the vision study has been spoke about, we've asked about it. This is going on for years. A lot of the problems have been going on for years and been ignored by Laura, by CAC. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that you people could do something for us. And it's not only Balboa, it affects a lot of people around in the neighboring communities. And people at, at the CAC meeting, they say, oh, well, nobody's complaining about it in your area. Well, every time somebody complains about it, we get shut down on the internet, or we repeat the same thing. I've been on talking to CAC since 2018 because of the planes that come on and fly over my house continuously. And now they don't even fly the pipe flight path. They fly over my home. And once I started complaining about them flying over my home, they started doing it more. I get more planes flying over my home, which is not in the flight path at all. When is somebody going to crash on my house? Thank you. Thank you. If our next speaker could come on up, please, and tell me what name you signed up under. Maya Dibas. All right. Which items would you like to be heard on? One, two, and three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. My name is Maya Dibas, and I live in the pocket area of Lake Balboa. I'm asking the TTT committee to pass motion 23-1339 as is without amendment. I'm also asking that the ill-fated Bonsif Helenet proposal to be rejected with no contractual rights granted. The city cannot approve any more developments that do not include mitigation members measures to reduce the toxic fumes harming us from Van Nuys Airport. I've lived in the pocket in Lake Balboa for 37 years. For over 30 years, it was not a problem. I was glad to be near the airport. There's a certain excitement that happens with that. However, several years ago, the sound got worse. The noise got worse. The fumes got worse. It's the increase in the late night rattling of my foundation of my house that is a problem. It is the increase 
in the fumes when I can't go in my backyard and sit and enjoy the sunshine. It is the increase in all of this that is the problem. And there has to be some kind of mitigation. So it's not that the airport is a problem. It's the increase in loud jets late at night and the fumes that are the problem. So thank you for hearing us here in Van Nuys. Thank you. I'm going to have our next speaker come on up, and I'm just going to call a few more names so you can come get in line. Uh, Steve Brackett, Sue Steinberg, Lisa, Liz Garcia. Hi there. Which name did you sign up under? Nicholas Edward. All right, Nicholas, which items would you like to be heard on? One, two, three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. My name is Nicholas. I'm 18 years old, and I grew up, the, I grew up next to Van Nuys Airport. I'm asking the Triple T Committee to pass Motion 2339. We desperately need a strong and thorough airport plan. I'm also asking that the Bonsef Helena proposal to be rejected. If it doesn't include reduction on ground emissions, should not be accepted. When I was little, I used to love going to the Van Nuys Airport and watching the planes take off and land with my dad. And now when I go outside, I like to go walk my dogs or just chill. I mean, I can't breathe anymore. I often can't breathe because of these horrific jet exhausts, and this has to stop. I know what volatile organic compounds and ultra-fine particles can do to people, and I'm fearful for my health and my sister's health. Oh, my sister's only nine. And this is a reality that the city could have prevented if they didn't let the deals like Bonsef Helenet get approved. So for the sake of myself and my little sister, please do the right thing, approve 231339, and reject the Bonsef Helenet contract. Thank you for coming down today. Thank you. Come on up. Let me know what name you signed up under, please. Stephen Brackett. Which items would you like to be heard on? One, two, and three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm a 50-year resident of the pocket. I've watched Van Nuys Airport grow from a great, respectable facility that was vital to our community, uh, similar to what I experienced in Santa Monica because at that time I was born and raised under the flight path from the Santa Monica Airport. We've all seen what's happened since the closure of Santa Monica Airport and nobody in their right mind would think that they should close Van Nuys Airport. However, we do ask for some reasonable help in trying to mitigate the problems that are inherent with the growth at the airport of these days. Specifically, we ask you to pass the motion on 23-1339 as is, without amendment, and to uh, vote against the ill-fated Bonsal Hellnet proposal with no contractual rights granted. Uh, you know, we're the people around the airport, and we're the voters, the taxpayers, and we're just asking the elected officials that we pray balance the needs of our community, the needs of the residents against the economic growth that is seemingly out of control at VNY right now. We deserve your respect and help in minimizing the health hazards that are occurring on a daily basis. I've watched too many of my neighbors pass on for who knows what, it certainly wasn't aided by the growth of the uh, health problems, the air uh, inherent with the jets and what have you from Van Nuys Airport. Thank you very much for your time here. It's wonderful that you're able to accommodate us here in Van Nuys uh, for this meeting. You're welcome. Thank you so much. If our next speaker could come up, let me know which name you signed un up under. First of all, I want to thank you for bringing the meeting here and to thank our wonderful council person for keeping her promise about bringing meetings to the Valley for a change. Where was the red? Which name did you over? sign up under, please? Sue Steinberg. Okay. Which items would you like to be heard on? I want to be uh, talking about items one, two, and three. Great. You have and two I, minutes. Go ahead. Okay. And I want you to see the map where we live, and I want all of you to see the map where we live. Okay. Hi, my name is Sue Steinberg, and I live in Lake Balboa, right across from Van Nuys. We have nothing against <laughs> the airport. 
But passing motions 1339 and 38 are vital to the community's health and well-being. We need responsible and organized studies done before any further development happens. These motions will ensure this. There have been too many exa examples of past negligence, and this will stop that. The benefit of a new comprehensive airport plan is critical. My neighborhood has been located adjacent to the airport since 1951. And again, we're not saying close it down, but it needs to be sustainable and compatible with its location. I've lived there since 1986, and in the past, Van Nuys tried to be a good neighbor. Now its aim is to increase air traffic in already the most congested airspace in the world. And they want to expand a service for charter private jets and flight schools with no regard to the surrounding communities. Motions 1339 and 1338 will help address these problems. That's why there's so much resistance from certain stakeholders. As stewards of Van Nuys, LAWA should be looking out for the public's interest. We have nothing against Helenet and the service it provides. They will continue to exist and do their work without the motion. 24125. It's about bond theft deal that will set the city back 25 years. It doesn't include LA's goal of modernization and environmental upgrades. This is just an, another smoke and mirrors pretense of improvements that will only bring in more jets as it's proven they've done in the past. Like Mr. Castagna's Aero Lease West property along Havenhurst, subjecting my neighborhood and thousands of us to toxic fumes on a daily basis. Stop the deception Thank you. and vote Thank no. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. If our next speaker could come on up, I'm going to call a few names. Lisa, Liz Garcia, Mary Dignan Hill, Stephen Leffert, Suzanne Gutierrez. Hi, which name did you sign up under? Uh, Lisa, and thank you very much. Lisa, for real quick, before you start, which, which items did you want to be heard One, on? One, two, and three. All right, you have two minutes. Go okay. ahead. Okay, first, thanks for coming out here. I know Van Nuys is kind of far, but we really appreciate it. I mean, honestly, um, it'd be great to have it at something at night. I know that's a lot for you guys, though. So. Um, I'm at, first of all, I'm asking the TTT committee to pass motion 231339 as is. I'm also asking that the controversial Bonsef Helenet proposal be rejected with no contractual rights granted. The city cannot approve any more developments that do not include mitigation measures to reduce the toxic fumes harming us from, Vanny, from Van, Van Nuys Airport. Meeting the Cal Green requirements does not mean Bonsef Helenet met the critical modernization needed to address the APU fumes the introduction of jets would cause. We need a specific airport plan for Van Nuys Airport. The world has changed in incredible ways since 2006, and it's absolutely necessary there is a moratorium on all changes until we have a new specific plan in place that, require, that creates a roadmap that works for both the airport and the surrounding impacted communities and businesses. LAWA should not be working off a specific plan that's outdated and violating federal policy. Stop all aviation area expansion before creating a new specific airport plan that must involve community and stakeholders' input. And thank you again for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Next speaker, come on up. Hi there. Which name did you sign up under? Steve Leffert. Thank you, Steve. Which items would you like to be heard on? One, two, and three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Okay. I'm firmly in support of uh, 1338 and 1339. Um, I hope that any future plan that comes up has enforcement uh, back in 2009, uh, I was on Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council, and we we approved the uh, Castle and Cook's uh, FBO uh, on the condition that they were towing in the planes, not running them. And they swore that that's what they were going to do, showed us their tow vehicle. They are totally ignoring that fact now, and there seems to be no enforcement available from LAWA. Um, and as, as for uh, 24, uh, 125, they have asked in their, uh, for their lease to have a categorical exemption from CEQA. Well, you know, the, the wording in, the, in, Cal in uh, Los Angeles uh, Charter uh, is that the exemption, there's no possibility, they can only get an exemption if there's no possibility that the active activity in question may have a significant effect on the environment. There's no way you can run jet-powered helicopters 
uh, there that don't produce some kind of environmental effect. So the asking for a categorical exemption is BS at its best. And again, uh, I am supporting uh, 1338 and 1339. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next speaker, come on up. Please tell me what name you signed up under. Hi, I'm Mary Dignan Hill. Okay, which items would you like to be heard on? One, two, and three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. I am asking that the TTT committee to pass motion 23-1339 as is without amendment. I am also asking that the ill-fated Bonsef Helenet proposal to be rejected with no contractual rights granted. The city cannot approve any more developments that do not include mitigation measures to reduce the toxic fumes harming us from VNY. I live in Lake Balboa, and I spend many mornings and afternoons walking my streets with my dog, talking to my neighbors, and I see people wearing masks, and when I ask them, oh, are you living with someone that has COVID right now? They say, no, I can't breathe this air. Um, the people that live in Van Nuys in Lake Balboa are not people taking charter jets. They are not people taking private airplanes. They should not have to bear the brunt of the health and environmental hazards and harms that are produced by the airport. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to call a few more names. Liz Garcia, I've called it a couple times. Suzanne Gutierrez, Taylor Young. Timi, I apologize if I don't pronounce this properly. Your Kip, Yanni, Jacqueline Robert Makar. Um, I'm Suzanne Gutierrez. I will go up last. I signed up last. I'm recording, um, doing a live recording. So just at the very end, I will go up last. Okay, Thank fair you. enough. Next speaker, come on up. Anyone? <laughs> come on. <laughs> Tell me what name you signed up under. Taylor Young. Okay, Taylor, which items would you like to be heard on? One, two, and three. You've got two minutes. Go ahead. Okay, and I don't know the verbiage of uh, those proposals that I, I, I want to just repeat. Though You know what I'm saying. We, we know what you're talking okay. about. <laughs> anyway, I'll just make it short and sweet. We live in Woodland Hills, so it's, you know, a little bit of a distance from Van Nuys. But in Woodland Hills, south of the boulevard, um, south of Taft, there is not one moment in the day now where we do not hear the engine of a plane approaching, going over our neighborhood, or departing. Not one moment. And last Sunday, when we were, my husband and I, who could have been here if, if it had been at a, you know, an evening time, we woke up this last Sunday Quarter to six, there was the sound of a private jet going over our house that was louder or as loud as a commercial jet. And we decided as we were lying there to time it. There was one every five minutes. And that went on for three hours. So I don't know what has caused this. But it's all private jets. When we go out to see what's flying over us, it's these white, large white jets and the, the prop planes. I, and I do thank uh, Ms. Padilla and Ms. Park because I have asked so many of my representatives why this happened, why it was allowed to happen, and you are the only people to answer my email. So thank you, thank you for that. Thank you. Next speaker, if you could just let me know what name you signed up under. Well, I'm Timmy, and I will speak now if you want me to, but I also was one of the last ones to sign up, and I think it's nice to have interests feathered throughout, so could I possibly retain my place at the end of the line? Timmy, we, we really got to keep this Okay, I respect that. If you don't mind, that. I appreciate That's it. That's okay. You, uh, First let me know which items you want to talk one, about. One, two, and three. Okay, you've got two minutes. Go okay. ahead. Thanks. First and foremost, I really want to thank Councilwoman Padilla for making this effort, for making it happen, for doing the homework, 
for speaking to all sides and ensuring that you had a full focus on what this district and this entire valley needed. It's extraordinary what you've done. Quite frankly, it's unprecedented. I haven't seen a motion this competent with criteria in a very long time. <laughs> Um, Councilwoman Park, your staff is amazing. I want to thank you for their cooperation and their attentiveness. I really appreciate the effort being out here, and I know a lot of people emailed me that they would have loved to have come, but as the gentleman told you from Lake Balboa, it is a working class, low income, middle class, and below poverty level area. They have a very hard time getting out in the work day. Um, listen, bottom line, I appreciate that a lot of Helenet employees are here today. But I want to make it very clear. Helenet's operations and existence on this property are not in jeopardy. They exist there now. They will exist there upon the rejection of this proposal. No one's losing their job. No medical flights are in jeopardy. Nor are their luxury Fortune 500 charter flights in jeopardy. So we appreciate what they do for community, as we do all businesses at Van Nuys. But what we don't appreciate is the deception that went involved in this particular proposal, uh, and also the fact that there will be introduction of jets on the property without the critically needed modernization components to offset and to reduce those toxic auxiliary power unit emissions that will come with those jets. These capital investment dollars must start to be spent on what benefits the city and its citizens as well as the surrounding business community. It's not just residents that are being fumigated. Holy cow, that went quickly. Okay, it's also the businesses. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Next speaker, come on up. If you could just let me know what name you signed up under, please. Um, hello everyone, my name is Jacqueline and I signed up for myself and my husband, Jacqueline and Robert Marcaravanes. Which items would you like to be One, two, on? and three, You please. have two minutes, go ahead. Sure. Uh, first and foremost, I wanted to thank uh, the Trade, Travel and Tourism for giving us the opportunity to meet here and share our everyday experience living very close to Van Nuys Airport. My name is Jacqueline Torosian. I live in Northeast California, CD12. I'm asking the TTT committee to pass motion 23-139 as is, without amendment. I'm also asking that the ill-fated Bozenf Helinet proposal to be rejected with no contractual rights granted. The city cannot approve any more developments that do not include mitigation measures to reduce the toxic fumes harming us from Van Nuys. So adding to that, uh, toxic fumes, I also wanted to talk about the air, the noise pollution, because the noise pollution is also a very, very serious uh, issue, uh, which is caused by the Van Nuys Airport. You cannot believe that we undergo 16 hours each day of a very, very specific noise. The noise material and its mag magnitude, I want to make sure that everyone in this room understand we are talking about what type of noise, its material, its frequency, and its magnitude, which is very, very dangerous for the human body, for mental and physical health. Every Saturday and Sunday after a work week, we are working people. We don't have rest because propellers fly over our heads 16 hours. So my husband and I literally leave the house, flee the house to not undergo that torture. And I want to make sure that everyone understands here what is going on. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to call a few more names while our next speaker comes up. Barry Snyder, Liz Garcia, Bob Brahman, Muriel... Eskigian Penny Alpert. Hi there. Can you tell me what name you signed up under? Hi. Good morning. My name is Yuriko Yanni. Thank you. Which items would you like to be heard on? Uh, uh, one, two, three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Yes. So uh, thank you, everyone, for meeting us here at Van Nuys. I am an Encino resident, and um, I'm asking the TTT committee to pass motion 231339 as is without amendment. 
I'm also asking that the ill-fated bondship uh, proposal to be rejected with no contractual rights granted. The city cannot approve any more developments that do not include mitigation measures to reduce the toxic fumes um, that we all are being uh, affected. Uh, and Encino is next to Lake Balboa, if you are not familiar with uh, this uh, particular area. I do now have planes flying over my house all the time. The first thing that I hear in the morning is the sound of a plane, and the last thing that I hear when I go to bed, because I work from 2 to 10.30, I, I come home around 11.30 at night, and I can tell you that every night now I hear at least three planes. That didn't happen before. Um, so we are talking about toxic pollution. This is also noise pollution for us. Um, I've been in Encino for 25 years, and I fear that if we do not collectively do something, things are going to get worse. And the affected are not going to be the Van Nuys Airport. It's going to be the um, Valley residents, because we also are competing with airspace, with the Borbank Airport, and the Van Nuys, and all the helicopters. This is happening every day. Thank you. Thank you. Our, have our next speaker come up, please. If you could tell me what name you signed up under. Hi, I'm Murray Eskijian. Murray, which um, items would you like to be heard on? On items one, two, and three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. All right. Hi, my name is Murray Eskijian, and I live in Encino. I've also grown up in Van Nuys since 1980, so I'm a resident of the Valley and proximity to Van Nuys Airport for 44 years. I am asking the Trade TTT Committee to pass motion 2339 as is without amendment. I am also asking for the ill-fated Bonds of Helenet proposal to be rejected with no con contractual rights granted. The city cannot approve any more developments that do not include mitigation measures to reduce the toxic fumes harming us from Van Nuys Airport. Um, I'm also concerned about how our general aviation airport has turned into a commercial airport for the billionaires, millionaires. It's become a playground and a launching pan, pad for their private jets. Just this morning, I can assure you that I wake up and my family wakes up, my kids wake up at 4, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. Just today, 5.57 a.m., 6.11 a.m., 6.16 a.m., 6.18 a.m., 6.20 a.m., all recorded on my... Um, airport uh, uh, to report the jets flying before and uh, after uh, curfew. Um, it's really a hardship trying to get to work, trying to get to school, trying to have a productive day when you're woken up at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning by bombastic, piercing, and jarring jet noises that do nothing to the community other than disturb us with our environment, with our health, with the noise, and it's hard to live here while letting these uh, private jet companies take, find a loophole and take advantage of the communities and neighborhoods around Van Nuys Airport. Thank you. Thank you so much. If we could have our next speaker come up and let me know what name you signed up under, please. Yeah, my name is Bob Raymond, and I'll be speaking on items two and three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. All right. I'm chair of the Sherman Oaks Neighborhood Council Airport Committee. Sonk is on record with a community impact statement strongly supporting both CF 23-1338 and 23-1339. I'll focus my comments on 1339 and Bonseth Helenet. Regarding uh, 1339, Sonk urges the Triple T Committee to approve this motion as written and have it placed on the City Council consent calendar. Sonk particularly applauds the calling for things lacking in the vision study namely rigorous data analysis to facilitate the decision-making process, the sharing of these data and analyses with the public, the creation of a Van Nuys Airport-specific plan Citizens Advisory Committee, and for requiring, requiring the advi Advisory Committee to be directly involved throughout the entire specific, specific plan decision-making process. We also request that all of the, all of the neighborhood councils most directly impacted by Van Nuys Airport, including Sonk, have a representative on that committee. 
Regarding Bonsef Helenet, let me now speak to that. Sonk is firmly in opposition to the Bonsef Helenet lease. This proposed project could, could continue Lawa's conversion of Van Nuys Airport from an airport housing mostly occasional prop planes to a jet port for the very wealthy. Not only is the project itself not in the city's nor the surrounding neighborhood's best interest, but the RFP and subsequent selection process were critically flawed for concealing from the public that this project, while modernizing the existing helicopter base, would be displacing existing storage for 30 prop planes so that two new hangars could be built for use by jets, not just helicopters. Song therefore urges rejection of this lease or at a minimum deferring any action on it until the specific plan process is completed so that other options that are better suited to the site could be considered. Thank you. Thank you so much. If our next speaker could come up, I'm going to call a few more names. Catherine Perwin, Penny Alpert, Stacy Hoff, Tony Marlowe. And if you could tell me what name you signed up under, please. Hi, I signed up under the name Penny Alpert. Okay, Penny, which items would one, you two, like? And three, All right, you've please. got two minutes. Go ahead. Okay, so first I just want to thank Councilman Park and your really responsive, amazing office for um, making it so that we could be here today. I, um, in spite of health issues and taking off of work, it made it much easier for me to get here because it's hard to get to other locations. Um, I also want to thank Mehmet and because um, I'm um, from Encino, CD4, so I, I really appreciate that you're here and for Council person Padilla for us, uh, really representing for all of us because um, really it's you are so remarkable that I'm going to cry but you're so remarkable we've been working on this a really long time and no one has stood up for us until now so I'm CD4 you're you're not even my representative I'm so grateful to you um, let me just say that um, I live south of 101 and CD4 um, uh, let me go ahead and get this out of the way. I respectfully asking the TTT committee to pass motion 23-1339 as is without amendment. Also respectfully asking that the bonds of Helena proposal be rejected with no contractual rights granted. The city must not propose, uh, must, must not approve any more developments that do not include mitigation measures to reduce the toxic fumes harming us from Van Nuys Ar Airport. Just want to say that um, I'm here for balance. I have a child that works at Van Nuys Airport. Let me just say that again. My child works at Van Nuys Airport. He's employed there. I'm not out to knock down the airport, but there's got to be some balance for us who live under. I live in Encino. There was a flight path over my head. I'm directly at the end of the flight path just on the other side of the 101. My... Um, my ability to be able to rent out my property, which was going to be my retirement, that the, the, the um, film industry doesn't want to be able to rent, doesn't want to uh, work in our neighborhood anymore. So how is it that the entertainment industry is losing out to these new charter jets? I, I just don't get it. So um, thank you. That's all I want to say. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much. If you could just tell me the name you signed up under. Yes, Barry Snyder. All right. Which and, items? Uh, three, but right. general comment. We're not taking any general well, public comment. Well, number three then. All right, uh, got one I, minute on item three. Thank you. I'd like to address, uh, you know, say a couple of, of good things. I, I'm not so, con, you know, so tied up in the um, political aspect of this with regard to the community and the environment, but I would like to say some very good things that the stakeholders and the leaseholders do uh, for the community. Um, I work with a private aviation company in Van Nuys. We recently held a fundraiser for uh, local arts programming. We painted a Lear 60 airplane that my company donated. We worked with other leaseholders and we raised over $100,000 for arts programming for local schools in the community. Um, we'd like to do more of that. Lala has engaged us. We would like to do more of that type of thing to support the community and want to make sure that the people that are flying in and the people that are around support and they ha are affluent and they have the resources to support the local community and the things they want to do in the community. So I just wanted to say thank you to that. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to call a few more names while our next speaker comes up. Stacy Hoff, Tony Marlowe, Marlo, Steve Argybright, Abby Ginsburg. Hi, which name did you sign up under? Catherine Perwin. All right, Catherine, which items? One, two, and three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. I'm Catherine Perwin, the owner of Helenette. I met my husband shortly after he founded the company, so I've been involved with it on some level ever since. 
After the loss of my husband eight years ago, I stepped in to lead Helenet with two objectives. One was to ensure that our life-saving missions continues. Since 1999, we've flown over 10,000 critically ill children for CHLA, a mission we're extraordinarily proud of, and we've been flying organs for Southern California hospital transplant teams for 35 years, transporting an average of 1,000 organs a year. Another objective, equally as important, is there are 65 families that depend on Helenet. And everyone who knows me knows that I care deeply about these families. We have some folks from Helenet here today. Can you guys stand up? These Helenet employees perform safety critical work in a facility that is in a severe state of disrepair and falls far short of meeting operational demands. With all due respect to Council Member Padilla, we will not be there much longer in the future if this is not approved. Um, if, if anybody would like to question that, please come and visit us. During summers, our maintenance team, camera crews, often work outside in 110 or higher degree temperatures because there isn't sufficient hangar space for them to perform all of their work indoors. Although conditions inside our dilapidated hangars aren't much better. Helenet pilots, many of whom work night shifts, work out of a pilot's lounge that is structurally run down and lacks space for adequate sleeping quarters for rest between flights. Employees take their meal breaks in a hangar so aged that it offers little protection from heat, cold, or even rain. The hangar structure is so worn and compromised that all attempts to control rat infestations are ineffective. Every one of Helenet's 65 team members takes tremendous pride in the many lives we touch through the work we do. We simply ask for the ability to do this work in modern facilities that are well-maintained, safe, functional, and humane. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. You could tell me which name you signed up under. Stacy Hoff, and I'm here to talk about the um, to pass motion 23-1339 with that amendment, and also to reject the Helenet, the boss not Helenet proposal. Without, okay, you have um, two minutes. Go ahead. Van Nuys Airport's gotten out of control. It's causing air pollution and noise pollution, and it's just reducing longevity. Recreational general aviation is being replaced by jets, charters, um, commercial flights, and helicopters. And there's way too many helicopters. The police uh, expanded their fleets recently. We have the fire helicopters. We have news helicopters, tiny bubbles, Helenet, Helicopters Inc. flying at all hours of the night, waking us up 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning. They're flying 400 feet above the house, causing vibrations. Noise is so loud, I can't even have conversations on the phone. I can't even have conversations with neighbors outside my house. We also have the jets, TVPX, Fletjex, VistaJet, JetNex, Executive Jet, Clay Lacey, William and Trust. These are all Falcons, 737s, Gulfstreams, Hawker. They are so loud that I have to stop what I'm doing and I have to put plug my ears just to block out the sound. I mean, it's really getting ridiculous. The frequency is awful. And just because this was land use was designated at one point in time, maybe it needs to be revisited. Changes happen. I mean, people have their livelihoods invested in their houses. I mean, this is just, I, I really cannot support expanding more helicopters. Really, please reject that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. McCosker, would you be willing to take the chair for just a moment? Yes, All right, thanks. Please uh, identify what name you signed up under and what are you speaking on? Hi there. I'm Tony Marlowe, uh, items one, two, and three. Thank you. You'll have two minutes. Thank you. I'm the president of Castle and Cook Aviation. We've been on the airport since 1981. I learned to fly at the airport myself in 1977. I ask for your support in 24125 for the Bonsef Helenet. They've been awarded a lease through a long established process. They run their business and will continue to do so and contribute to jobs, the tax base, pay rent to the city. They, like many organizations, mine included, desire to invest millions of dollars in updating, modernizing, making our airport facilities safer, more sustainable, and more efficient. Their $20 million replacement facility will become property of the city at the end of the lease. 
it's important for all of us to have predictable, timely turnaround in much needed revitalization at the airport. This has measurable economic impact in jobs, city revenue, and tax contribution. Request this, uh, I request your approval of this, future RFPs and leases for the revitalization of the Van Nuys Airport, and I thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Next speaker. Please identify yourself and what items are you speaking on? Uh, the Bonsef, my name is Steve Augerbright. Do you, just on the just on one item? Um, yeah, just one item is fine. You have a minute. Thanks. Um, I would like to see the uh, Bonsef Helenet uh, proposal uh, move ahead, but the reason is that if we don't continue to develop the airport, we're going to lose out the vision study, uh, which I think is well needed, and I think the neighbors all deserve a new look at everything may take decades. Uh, if you recall, the plan we're working on now started in 1995, and that is 12 years before the iPhone was even invented. So to think that this new vision study is going to come about in a couple years is wrong, and I would hate to see the airport not advance itself during this process and allowing these buildings to uh, upgrade, be more environmental friendly. Um, the world is changing, and I think the airport needs to move ahead Thank with you. it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, your, your name and um, your items. My name is Abby Ginsberg. I'm speaking on one, two, and three. You have two minutes. Thank you. My name is Abby Ginsberg. I'm flight following supervisor at Helenet. I've been with Helenet for over 22 years, and I want to support this bods, uh, the project. Um, I'm proud to say that I am a lifetime employee at Helenet. The mission that means the most to the Perwin family and our family is saving lives. It's very fulfilling to be able to go home at the end of the day and know that I played a part, my company played a part in saving lives. What I'm looking for in the future is a facility for a company that affects, that have, Sorry, that reflects the proud, successful organization that we are. Our office leaks when it rains. This is what I see outside my desk every day that there's been rain. It pours through in several places. We just want to work in a spot where we can be comfortable, not have to wear rain boots in the office, and we can all be happy and save lives every day. Thank you. Thank you very much. So next speaker is coming up. I might be repeating some names, but you can line up um, Alicia Sese or Cease, uh, Allison Raccoon, Brandon Young, Brian Council, Calvin Lowe, MD. Go right ahead. Please identify yourself and your items. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, item number three, Bond Staff Development. My name is Brian Council. Thank you, Brian. You have one minute. Thank you. No problem. I, Sun Air Jets, I am the president of Sun Air Jets. We have been residents at the Van Nuys Airport since 2011. And two years ago, we were the beneficiaries of being able to move into a brand newly constructed Bonsef development. And I'm just here to testify to the quality of the workmanship and the uh, benefit to the airport of uh, newly developed and nicely constructed uh, facilities. So uh, I'm certain that Bonsef would do a comparably excellent job and it would be an improvement to the airport. I'm just here to indicate that on the, uh, on, for the benefit of our company, we have been able to move into a newer facility that's updated and modern and secure, and, um, and certainly it's attractive to our clients, and it is a benefit to the airport both from a facility improvement standpoint and, and from a property tax standpoint, sales tax, employment, and uh, just uh, health of the airport. So anyway, I'm just here to indicate that it's a quality investment. Thank you. If our next speaker could come up, please. Let me know what name you signed up under. Oh, Alicia Sessi. And which items would you like oh, to speak on? One, two, and three, please. All right, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Hi, um, my name is Alicia Sessi. Um, I'm a registered nurse, and I would like the Bonseth Helenet proposal to be approved. Um, so as you know, the Allen Perwin Emergency Transport Program has helped um, save over 1,000 children in the past, 20, in the past 25 years. 
Um, Helena has also worked with several, several major hospitals in Southern California to provide transportation services for organ transplant patients. Um, Helena first flew their first organ in 1989, uh, which was a heart for Cedar sinai and they've been, they have been providing life-saving services uh, for organ recipients for uh, ever since, um, delivering approximately 1,000 organs every year to people in Southern California. Um, so I think that they deserve to have a healthy um, environment to work in, and I would really appreciate if you approve this. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker could come on up, please. And let me know which name you signed up under. Hi, uh, Allison Rakin. Okay, Allison, which items would you like to be heard on? Uh, one, two, and three, please. All right, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Hi, so um, I've worked at Helenet for almost 10 years. I'm currently the executive vice president. A major responsibility of mine is ensuring that our team has a safe and adequate working environment. Unfortunately, I'm failing to meet that obligation and continue to let my team down due to the current state of our facilities. I came into work this week and was bombarded with multiple roof leaks, damaged walls, ceiling tiles soaked in water, employee desk and electronic equipment flooded, freshly painted walls destroyed. Not only are we dealing with damaged property, but all of these issues are incredibly distracting and take away time from our busy team conducting life-saving work. There's a lot of misinformation being spread about why Helenet wants to rebuild, with the narrative that we want to bring more jets to Van Nuys. While we, already, while we use jets based at Van Nuys for organ and medical transportation services, we do not intend to bring additional jets to the airport. We do not operate jets, but contract with a small group of trusted partners that provide jet services already in Southern California. Additionally, many of the jets that we use are based at other airports and never touch down at Van Nuys. By allowing the building upgrade of our facility, Helenet will be able to con continue to provide the vital services for the community while providing a safe place for our employees. This consists of local citizens in this district. They deserve to be in a safe, clean space, free from constant distractions and potential safety hazards. I urge the council to approve the bonds that Helenet proposed lease and support the hardworking team that calls Helenet home. Thank you. Thank you. If our next speaker could come up, please, and let me know what name you signed up under. Hi, which Good name? Morning. You, uh, which Brand, name? Brandon Young. Okay. Um, and speaking on items one, two, and three. All right, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, council members. My name is Brandon Young. I'm a partner at the Minat Phelps Law Firm. I'm here today to speak on behalf of Bonsef and the other items here. My comments will be brief. There's no action for TTT or the council to take. The lease before the committee has already been deemed approved. The proposed action should be withdrawn. The issue is simple. Charter section 606 provides that upon board approval, the lease shall be submitted to council. And crucially, the charter states that unless the council takes action disapproving within 30 days, the lease shall be deemed approved. Like other provisions in the charter, like section 245 or formerly Prop 5, board actions are self-executing. If there's an approval, the clock starts, the matter is submitted, and if there's no action within 30 days, the council does not have jurisdiction to act. The framers of the charter, including members of this law firm, put Charter 606 together in place to make government run smoother and to depoliticize the use of essential municipal facilities. Absent those restraints, others could pressure departments to hold items indefinitely. Here, the board unanimously approved the Bonsef lease on December 1st, the resolution states that 606 applies. On December 15, 2022, the matter was submitted to the council. The approval was e-filed with TTT. It was e-filed with the city clerk, among others. The council had until December 31st, 22 to act, did not. There are no grounds to act now. Each of you are duty bound to uphold the charter. The charter itself says this. Continuing this item, despite the clear application of 606, in our view, would be a deliberate violation of the charter. We've been going through this process for over a year. At this point, council is leaving us with few options outside of legal remedies. The damage is real, and so is the charter, and we urge TTT to withdraw the item. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna call a few more names while our next speaker walks up. Chad Lancaster, Clarissa Lurchenfeld Keller, Curtis Woods, Elliot Cohen. And if you could please tell me what name you signed up under. 
Good morning. My name is Calvin Lowe. And which items would you like to be heard on? All three, please. All right, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Good morning. My name is Dr. Calvin Lowe, and I'm the medical director of the Allen Perwin Emergency Transport Program at Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. And I'm here to share my support for Helenet. For about nearly 25 years, Helenet has served as a sole provider, private helicopter air ambulance provider for Children's Hospital in Los Angeles at no cost to CHLA or to the families of the patients that are brought to the hospital for care. CHLA estimates about approximately 10,000 Angelinos, children and adults, are now living happier and more hopeful lives as a result of Helenet's dedication of these resources to CHLA. And personally, you know, CHLA is allowed to spread their arms like an umbrella to remote areas to children, critically ill children, who are not, don't have the resources so that they can be brought back to get the best care at Children's Hospital in Los Angeles and to optimize the hopes of their parents and the chances of survival for their children. It's no accident that the Allen Permanent Emergency Transport Program at CHLA bears the name of Helenet's founder and for the leadership of the Children's Emergency Department, which treats nearly 100,000 children a year. Uh, it is, uh, the program is something that we would like hope that the civic leaders will not permit uh, the program to be compromised. It's my understanding that Helenet's current facilities have languished in disrepair and the current situation is untenable, jeopardizing Helenet's uh, future in the city of Los Angeles. So on the behalf of every one of the more than 10,000 children who have already received care, following serious illness or injury, and those who may need their interventions in the future, if we were to lose Helenet as a partner, it would be a total loss for our community and CHLA. And I'd like to end by saying that what we do what we do, we do it best with Helenet so that the children may live. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, next speaker, come on up and please tell me what name you signed up under. Hi, my name is Chad Lancaster. Uh, for one, two, three. All right, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Uh, I'm an employee at Helenet. I've been a camera operator for one of the new ships for the last six years, and I wanted to kind of give a different perspective on our building and where we work. I know some of you haven't come to see where we work and how it all works. Any of the public wants to come, come to the fence and come yell at us and wave and say you want to look around at what we do and where we work because a lot of the facilities are falling apart. On Monday, when it was raining hard, I had two or three inches of water I had to run out to the helicopter in and power up a 220 volt inverter to power up the helicopter standing in three inches of water. So, you know, anybody wants to come by and see what we do? I know some of the council members haven't been to Helenet, and it's hard for me as an employee for you guys to make a determination without seeing it in person. Thank you. If our next speaker can come on up and please tell me what name you signed up under. I start with saying thank you for having this meeting. I hope we get a good results by being here. You're welcome. Which name did you sign up under? My name is Kathy. My last name is Naderi. All right. Which items would you like to speak on? One, two, three, please. Okay, you have two minutes, go ahead. Yes. I'm living exactly by airport. I can see them, I can hear them, and the way that even I cannot stay in my backyard or front yard. The problem that I got in these years is my CT scan. Of my lung and my thyroid. They found nodules I didn't have before. Even right now, I'm going to see my oncology. I don't know what else should I say except these results. And I'm sure that is many, many neighbors are affected like me. Please help. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next speaker, please. Please tell me what name you signed up under. Curtis Woods. All right. Which items would you like to be heard on? One, two, and three, please. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Thank you for having um, this conversation today. My name is Curtis Woods, and I represent the Greater San Fernando Valley Chamber of Commerce. Um, the Greater San Fernando Valley Chamber of Commerce supports the proposed Bonds of Helenet lease at Van Nuys Airport. The lease is instrumental in ushering in significant improvements to the airport, thereby contributing 
to the betterment of the city of Los Angeles and its neighboring communities. Some of the benefits of the lease include job creation, where a of Helenet's presence will generate 100 high-wage local jobs with an average annual income of $87,000. Educational partnerships. Uh, Bonsef Helenet is committed to fostering partnerships with local tech, uh, technical aviation colleges, providing internships with job training opportunities for students, and aspiring um, students aspiring to pursue careers in a aviation. Substantial investment. The proposed lease entails a significant investment of over $20 million to modernize the property, which will include enhancements such as rotary wing and fixed wing hangar space, renovated ramp areas, terminal, office, shop space, as well as landscaping, hardscaping, sidewalks, and parking. These improvements are integral to the sustained growth and development of the VNY. Rent contributions on the on the lease term, Bonds of Helenet will contribute more than $6.8 million in rent to the Los Angeles World Airports. This financial commitment reflects their dedication to supporting the local economy and infrastructure. We're confident that the, appro um, the approval of the proposed lease will be advantageous to the aviation community, significantly benefiting the com um, and significantly benefiting the community. The positive impact on job creation, education, investment, public spaces, and financial contributions underscores the comprehensive benefits of Bonsef Helenet's presence at the VNY, uh, that the VNY will bring. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you so much. And if we can have our next speaker come up. Tell me what name you signed up under, please. Hi, my name is Clarissa Lurchenfeld Keller, and I'm speaking on 123. OK, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Starting with this, you heard my name, and I live in Sherman Oaks in the hills. And I'm asking the TTT committee to pass motion 23-1339 as is without amendment. I'm also asking that the ill-fated Bonds of Helena proposal to be rejected with no contractual rights granted. The city cannot approve any more developments that do not include mitigation measures to reduce the toxic fumes harming us from VNY. Um, we are bombarded from both airports, Burbank and Van Nuys. We live in the Sherman Oaks Hills. And it all started in 2017 when the flight, flight paths were changed. And we are asking that the flight paths will be returned to the original one further north and not over the hills, which is an extreme fire hazard. And the noise pollution causes extreme stress my mother in Germany hears it when I'm on the phone with her. It's extremely loud and it's constant. Just this morning, it was 8.13, 8.14, 8.17, 8.19. It is constant bombardment and the toxic emissions are so unhealthy. You heard the lady with her results and God bless her. Please think about your children and your own grandchildren and not about money only. You, money will not help you if you are fatally ill. So think about the future of your children and your grandchildren and not just about money. Thank you. All right, while our next speaker comes up, I'm gonna call a few more names. Emilio Mendez, Eric Gill, Erica Payne, and Aaron. And if you could please tell me the name you signed up under. My name is Elliot Cohen. I am president of Homeowners of Encino. Can you tell me what items you'd like to speak on? Items one, two, and three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. Los Angeles World Airports is a rogue agency within the city, the way they operate Van Nuys Airport. They have been expanding flight operations and infrastructure with impunity to the detriment of the community in contravention to the 2006 master plan. They are in violation of the FAA uh, reliever and general aviation capacity rules for passengers. Lauer is a destroyer of lives, property values, health, and education due to pollution and noise. I have constantly offered solutions to make Van Nuys a smaller and quieter, less polluting airport. They are completely ignored. Homeowners of Encino supports items one, two, and three as written, and I'm also not impressed with the crocodile tears our helicopter friends are spewing here, because if they really cared about their facility, Van Nuys Airport and Los Angeles World Airport, they would have maintained this leasehold 
a long time ago and not be suffering with holes in the roof and obvious things that have been going on for years. Thank you very much. Hi, if you could come on up and tell me what name you signed up under, please. Hi, good morning. My name is Emilio Mendez, and I, uh, items one, two, and three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Hi, I'm the assistant principal at North Valley Occupational Center, and I'm here to speak on behalf of our students at, that are part of the Aviation Maintenance and Mechanics Program that is housed at the Van Nuys Airport. Um, this is a program that is free to the community, um, and we are able to uh, offer this program free to the community uh, based on the dollar a year lease that we have uh, with the Van Nuys Airport. Um, also, in addition, LAWA recently uh, awarded us $193,000 in grant money for equipment to ramp up our instruction. Uh, currently, we have 130 students in the program. Um, an estimated uh, 50 will be completing the program in this school year. 85% um, uh, of these uh, uh, students who complete the program find employment uh, at the Vinice Airport or surrounding communities with a starting uh, wage of about $80,000 a year. Uh, in this summer coming up, we, are, we will be launching an uh, aviation bridge program. We were expected to bring 100 students from local high schools uh, to our facility at the Van Nuys Airport and introduce them into careers in the aviation field. Uh, while, Van, uh, while North Valley Occupational Center is proud um, and to help educate and train airframe and power plant mechanics, we know that students who graduate are eager to find good jobs and work in modern well-equipped facilities that meet uh, the expectation of where um, they wish to be employed. The goal is to love what you do and love where you're doing it. It is clear that some facilities at the Van Nuys Airport are in desperate need of rehabilitation and modernization. Please support the, and award the lease of the bonds that have held in it and move uh, the release additional RFPs to modernize Van Nuys Airport. Thank you. Thank you. If our next speaker could come up and please let me know what name you signed up under. Good afternoon, uh, Erica Payne. Let me lower this, I'm a little short. There you go. And uh, I'll be speaking on, on one, two, and three. You have two minutes, go All ahead. Right, thank you. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak today. My name is Erica Payne. I'm the purchasing and inventory manager at Helenet. I worked for Helenet for exactly a year, and since my time here, I've endured the dilapidated conditions of our buildings and facility. I'm new to aviation, coming from a motorsport background, but I've never worked in such neat, a place of such need uh, of repair. There are leaks that are hazardous when it rains, stairs that are dangerous to use, bathrooms that are exposed to the elements, and the state of the hangars is frankly unacceptable. The hangars are too small, forcing mechanics to work outside when they should not have to, and lack of air conditioning making winters and summers almost unbearable. Beyond that, hangars are falling apart. You can only repair something so much. It is for those reasons I am in full support of the Bond Sef Helena lease and rede redevelopment project. Not only will it provide a facility that is safe for Helenet staff, but also allow us to accommodate our current fleet and missions. We are not looking to disrupt community members or cause them any grief. We aim to maintain our current operations in a way that is productive and create an environment that is not only safe, but acceptable to operate in. Should you choose not to approve this project, people will continue working here. We will continue to save lives and continue to work together as a team and be the proud, successful organization we always have been. However, we will have to do it in conditions that are unsafe and unsustainable. I ask you to consider if you lived somewhere that had constant leaks, was too small to be comfortable for your families, had stairs that were unsafe for you and your family members to walk down, would you not want it to be considered? Would you want, and you had an opportunity to rebuild and make your living conditions better, would you not want it to be considered, to be acknowledged and taken seriously? This is far bi bigger than having nicer things. This is about being able to work in conditions that are safe and acceptable for human beings. I don't think anyone in good conscience could see the state of our facility and believe we weren't in need of this re redevelopment project. I ask you to consider the people who love the company they work for and only want to work in a place that is comfortable and fit to work in. We love this company, we care for the surrounding community and its members, and we only ask that you care about the countless men and women who commute 15 to minutes to two hours to come to work at this deteriorating facility as much as you do your constituents who chose to live in an area near an airport. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you so much. Next speaker, come on up and please tell me what name you signed up under and which items you would like to be heard on. Hello, I'm Eric Gill. I'm which, a small items, which items would you like to be heard on? Oh, on uh, one through three. Okay, you have two minutes, go ahead. Thank you. I'm Eric Gill. I'm a small business owner in Sun Valley and a representative of Extinction Rebellion in Los Angeles. 
I'm asking the TTT committee to pass motion 23-1339 as is without amendment. I'm also asking that the bonds of Helenet proposal be rejected with no contractual rights granted. Businesses uh, proposing expansion of the Van Nuys Airport often cite that they offer jobs and other poorly defined benefits to this community while blatantly ignoring two major crises that are unfolding here. The first crisis is that of public health. Obviously, public health should be our primary concern above all others. But the expansion that has already occurred here over the last several years has put the health of this community in jeopardy. At times, the air is so thick with jet fumes that you feel like you could cut it with a knife. There are no quick fix technologies that can mitigate this crisis. It simply hinges on too much jet traffic. Certainly, common sense would dictate that an independent environmental review be made before any expansion be considered. Indeed, Lawa should be embarrassed that this has not already been undertaken. The second crisis I refer to is climate change. Those of you who understand what climate change is should already understand that it is an existential threat to our children and grandchildren. But I don't want to talk about that. Instead, I want to make an appeal of bi to business people operating in the airport. I would ask you to consider, does it make sense to invent, in, to invest in expansion of this airport when the climate crisis may inevitably force the city to drastically curtail private jet travel? Is this something that you really want to rush into? Thank you for your time. Thank you. While our next speaker comes up, I would like to call a few more names. Gina Gibling, Hilda Dubon, Darren Holst, Ian Bell. And if you could tell me your name, please. Yeah. Hi, my name is Erin Huffer Etiel, and I'll be speaking on item one, two, and three. Okay, Erin, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm here to support the passing of 231339 without amendment and also to reject the Bonsef Hellnet contract. Um, I want to thank you for having this meeting. I think it's great that we have a chance to speak. Um, I know it's been a long time coming getting this meeting here in the Valley. Um, I live just down, <clears throat> just down the street from the Van Nuys Airport, and you know we moved here in 2015, 2015, and honestly, I just have to say that if I would have known that this was going to take place, that an airport would be expanding, I probably would not have bought the house. So it's very frustrating that, um, you know, this is happening right now. But I also want to say that, you know, I have a very young child at home and I'm very concerned about their health. Um, there's, you know, a lot of voices that have spoke today about health and the community and I really ask you to consider them. And lastly, I just want to say that um, <clears throat> just being here and listening to everything, I think it's just ironic that we're talking about health and, you know, we've got the health of workers that we're talking about. We've got the health of, of children um, that are obviously benefiting from, you know, an emergency transport system. And that's all very important. But we can't forget, you know, about the community also that is living through this. And we have nowhere to go. And no one's health should be prioritized um, over, you know, anyone else's. And I just ask you to consider that the health of the community and also the children living in the community, that is important too. And any expansion without mitigation efforts we're just going to be creating more health problems in the future. We need to just, if we're really going to think about health, let's think about health and let's prioritize everyone's health, not just some groups. Thank you. Thank you. If our next speaker could come up and please tell me your name and what items you'd like to speak on. My name is Hilda Dubon, topics one, two, three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm the HR director at Hellenet. Since joining Hellenet, my life has been profoundly influenced, not only my professional endeavors, but also my personal journey. From the moment I joined Hellenet, I was amazed by the dedication and passion of my colleagues, our shared commitment to excellence, and the noble goal of making difference in people's lives has been inspiring. Through our collective efforts, we have been able to uphold the highest standards and integrity. However, in the middle of our success, I am compelled to address pressing concerns regarding the safety of our current building at the airport. Despite our best efforts to maintain it, the infrastructure is showing signs of wear and tear that cannot be ignored from structural deficiency to safety concerns. 
As someone deeply invested in the well-being of our team members and the community we serve, I cannot in good concise overlook these issues. My office at times is, is it's very dangerous to work at when it's raining and there's a storm. Um, I'm afraid of coming into my office and seeing if, if there's going to be water leaks, if my computer, my office equipment is going to be damaged. Um, I also could see my colleagues just uh, in the office concerns about their safety. So I ask you, I plead you that you support Helenet Project. Thank you. Thank you. If our next speaker could come up, please tell me your name and which items you'd like to be heard on. Please. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, council members. I'm in favor of the Bonseft Helenet measure. I'm a mechanic at Helenet Aviation. I've been working there a year and a half. Previously, I was a Los Angeles City Police Sergeant for 32 and a half years, and working at Helenet has allowed me to continue my life of service for the community. I also live in the city, and currently I'm a reserve. Helenet Aviation, though a for-profit company, is known worldwide for its charitable contributions with over 11,000 children's hospital flights and uh, approximately 1,000 medical flights every year, we definitely make a difference in this world, and I appreciate being able to help Catherine and Helenet achieve those. Another thing I look forward to is the continuing collaboration Helenet has with other local law enforcement. I also look forward to sharing my experience as a mechanic and a pilot as Helenet works with youth and education services in our city with internships for education for those looking to have a career in aviation. Many years ago while flying, I had the pleasure of meeting Alan Perwin, and one of the things I found most impressive was his generosity. I look forward to working at Helenet as they continue to make the city of Los Angeles not only a nice place to work and live, but as a, a place for it to thrive. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. If our next speaker could come up and please tell me your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Good afternoon. Uh, Ian Bell speaking on one, two, and three. All right. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. i uh, just like to start by saying I'm a 40-year resident of the San Fernando Valley. The last eight of uh, lived in uh, CD6, Imelda uh, District. Um, I'd like to say that uh, I currently work at the airfield. Um, the, my experience at the airfield has broken, we'll call, a, a chain of, of low-income experience in my family and has now allowed me to, to send my son to college. All three of my children, including a 19-month-old, uh, raised in the San Fernando Valley happily um, in the flight path underneath the airport. Um, I understand the concerns of, of some of the folks here. I'd just like to mention that the Noise issue is a is a federal um, is a federal issue to be addressed. Uh, Bonsef Helenet will not uh, change any of that and has no control over it. I would like also to make something clear that uh, the current level of uh, dilapidation that Helenet is enduring isn't something technically under their control. They're renting from a landlord who allows that property to 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 be in that condition. Uh, the passing of this sublease will allow them more control of keeping things current, keeping things modernized, um, controlling, you know, aspects of their property that um, that bleed out into the into the neighboring community, right? Whether it be uh, stormwater pollution, things like that, they have more of a direct control over those things. And I know Helena and the team there would take pride in allowing their property to to uh, flourish in that way, right? I know that the, the 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 redevelopment would allow for solar and other things that that would ultimately add value and be um, environmentally conscious to the neighboring community. And with that, I'm, I'm finished. Thank you. Thank you so much. While our next speaker comes up, I want to call a few more names. I may have called these already, but I want to give folks another chance. Uh, Liz Garcia, Stuart Waldman, Veronica Moy, and Francisco Bill Delvac, Gina Gibling. And if you could tell me your name and which items you'd like to speak on, please. Yes, I'm Gina Gibbling. Okay, hi, Gina. <laughs> Thank you. Which, and all what items like? one, two, and three, please. All right, please. you've got two minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm, again, Gina Gibbling. I'm the program administrator for the Allen Perwin Transport Program at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Um, thank you for allowing us into your community today to address uh, some of these issues. Um, so, again, uh, we are in support of um, the Bonset uh, Helenet. 
Um, to I second the uh, sentiments of Dr. Lowe, so I won't go through everything again in the interest of time. Um, but the, the partnership with Helenet um, has been a 25-year commitment uh, in which they have provided air ambulance services for us uh, at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, as well as the families in um, the communities throughout the entire Southern California area at no cost, uh, which is a really the reason that we are allowed to exist as a flight program. Um, the flight program also allows us to provide additional programs within the organization. Um, so it is our understanding that Helenet's current facilities have languished and are in disrepair. Um, and the uh, current state of how everything is, is jeopardizing Helenet's ability uh, to exist and continue to provide these services for children, not just Children's Hospital Los Angeles, but the community as well. Um, so on behalf of uh, Children's Hospital Los Angeles and the more than 10,000 children um, and patients who have already received care following their serious illness and injury, um, we would just like to reiterate that it would be a loss for our community and for CHLA if we were not able to continue this work. Thank you. Thank you so much. You could just let us know your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Stuart Waldman. Uh, one, two, and three. All right, Stuart, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Morning. No, it's not even morning anymore. Um, sorry. Good afternoon, Stuart Waldman. I'm president of the Valley Industry and Commerce Association, VICA. Uh, VICA was founded in 1949, which also happens to be the year that the airport became the property of the city of Los Angeles, uh, which was also long before most all of the homeowners in this room bought their homes right next to an airport. Van Nuys Airport is an economic engine that has, uh, we need to keep it going. The Valley funds this city. The Valley makes up 39% of the population in the city, yet 45% of the economic output comes from the Valley. As long as we keep this going, the city keeps going. The economic impact report, the last one for uh, Van Nuys Airport in 2015 indicates that the airport created close to 11,000 jobs, $674 million in income, $2 billion in output, $125 million in state and local taxes, $170 million in federal tax revenues. In 1996, I became a field rep for a local legislator who represented the airport. And up until 2007, I, when I was chief of staff, we saw the airport change significantly. It got cl cleaner. It got quieter. The fact is, uh, I live in Van Nuys, uh, in the most filmed neighborhood in the city of LA, uh, by the way. Um, and the people behind me um, who don't want the airport will oppose every single project. Um, Let's see, I'm running out of time. Bonsef Helena RFP is an industrial section with low impact on the community and should be approved. Um, we cannot delay. It took 15 years the last time there was a master plan. That would be 2040 when no one in this room will still be in an elected office. So let's approve the Bonsef Helena project. Thanks, Mr. Waldman. While our next speaker comes up, I'm just going to call a few more names. Jorge Gonzalez, Jose a, Jose Alas, Josh Page. And if you could please say your name and the items you'd like to speak on. Bill Delvac, on behalf of Venice Hope Hotel. Honorable council members, as this committee knows, the city is in desperate need of additional hotel rooms in the vicinity of the convention center in order to attract the important out-of-town shows. We also have the 19, pardon me, the 2028 Olympics coming up. A, additional need for hotel rooms. This is a project that's been in the works for some time, but was slowed down with COVID and the general economic conditions. Simple matter before you to update the economic incentive study to determine whether the city will assist this project. It's an unusual project in that it's a moderate price point and we enjoy widespread support of labor, both with a project labor agreement and a hotel workers neutrality agreement. It's a simple step to keep the analysis moving forward. We urge your support of the item. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Delvac. If our next speaker could come up, please tell me your name and which items you'd like to speak on. My name is, my name is George Gonzalez. Uh, one, two, and three, please. All right, Mr. Gonzalez, you have two minutes. Go ahead. 
Thank you. I am uh, currently the COO of Hellenet Aviation. Uh, my prior life, I served 38 and a half years with the Los Angeles Police Department. I chose Hellenet as my next career because of the public service they provide and particularly saving lives of our most vulnerable citizens, those in need of transplants for organs and young children that could not reach the, uh, the, the service that uh, Children's Hospital of Los Angeles would provide without Hellenet. Hellenet is a uh, woman-owned business, employs over 20 Angelinos primarily, who call Hellenet their home away from home. Many of them have been there for decades. Not supporting the, uh, the Bontip Hellenet uh, initiative it changes nothing other than the condition in which our employees are expected to continue providing this life-saving service. Not supporting it, it, it it's, it's basically an improvement to allow the people who actually do this miracle work continue to do it in a professional, safe environment. As to the building condition and, and the reference that Hellenet has allowed it, uh, it that is not accurate. Uh, the, the leaseholder, the master leaseholder, is responsible for that, and we have documented trail of emails requesting assistance. That's not on us. If it were, in fact, a Hellenet structure, I assure you it would be in tip-top shape. The mission is honorable. The, the commitment from the employees is real. The impact to the community will not change whether or not you support this. It, Hellenet is, is not an operator of fixed-wing jet. They have no plans of acquiring any jets. Thank, Thank you for you. your time. Thank you so much. If our next speaker could please tell me their name and what items they would like to speak on. Josh Page, uh, talking on one, two, three. You have two minutes. Go uh, ahead. I'm the director of maintenance at Hellenet Aviation. I've been here uh, 13 years. Fun fact, I'm a product of the 80s. I love Airwolf. Airwolf was actually filmed in our hangar. It's over 40 years old. Uh, another fun fact, when I started at Hellenet, we had 21 helicopters. We now have 14. So we haven't grown helicopters. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I have two small children. Uh, it's a great comfort to know that I work on a helicopter that saves children's lives and organ transfers. Uh, some of the conditions, my staff, I have uh, eight uh, mechanics under me. Uh, so they, they're, our facility is in uh, serious need of new uh, new maintenance facility. To ma name a few challenges maintenance department deals with each and every day is uh, a giant lake of water in front of our maintenance hangar every time it rains. Um, multiple water leaks in the ceiling both in both hangers. Hanger panels detaching on windy days. Oh, that's, that's really fun, trying to keep a panel from hitting a car uh, and maybe cutting somebody's head off. Uh, extreme temperatures caused by no wall installations. I mean, in, in the winter, it's freezing cold in there. Summer, I mean, we are dying. I mean, it is not fun to be in there. And, and we don't have enough hangar room to even do maintenance in just the hangar. We're working outside. Uh, so, you know, I, I just, I, I'm obviously uh, wanting this to pass because, I mean, like I said, it's been 13 years. Every facility I've worked in at Hellinet has been old, dilapidated. I mean, we've been at this facility eight years. Uh, it is very challenging to conduct safe operations and maintenance in subpar conditions. Thank you. Thank you so much. We call a few more names. I've called these, but I just want to give folks another chance if they're still here. Liz Garcia, Veronica Moy, and Francisco. And if you could tell me, please, your name and what items you would like to speak on. Good afternoon. My name is Jose Alas, and I'm going to talk about uh, items one, two, and three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. First of all, I want to say thank you to the TTT committee for having us here. Um, I'm in uh, full support for uh, the bonds of Helen at least. And I would like the TTT committee to pass and approve the bonds as Helen at least. I've been working at the airport for the last 20 years, and I've been living at District 6, exactly in Van Nuys, for the last 20 plus years on a direct path of the Van Nuys Airport and the Burbank Airport with no any repercussions or issues for me and my family. I work at the Helenet buildings a couple times, and I've seen the firsthand the problems that Helenet has to deal with it. Uh, 
due to all and deteriorating uh, facilities. Bonset Helinet development will help and facilitate better services for all our local agencies, police, fire department, hospitals, and news channels. The, the development will bring a lot of work opportunities for the great San Fernando Valley and surrounding areas. Um, working at the airport has given me the opportunity to improve the quality of life for me and my family and allow me to afford to buy a house in the same District 6 that we're talking about. Also, it's really unfortunate that our representative from District 6 just walk away from this meeting. Thank you. Next speaker, if you could please let me know what name you signed up under and which items you would like to be, to be heard on, please. Good afternoon, my name's Tom Norton. I'd like to speak on items one, two, and three. I'm the president of Hellnet. Okay, Mr. Norton. Um, Warms my heart to see that due process is alive and well, something I defended for over 35 years. I respect and admire everyone here for their position and their comments. I want to talk a little bit about context on what happens when you have a condition in aviation that creates an untenable distraction. There's many causes for aviation fatalities. One of them is when a maintainer or an operator exceeds the capability to manage their distractions. I could reference a plane crash that happened in Grand Forks last night and a Hawker aircraft that we've actually used before. I could refer to the Kobe Bryant crash, distractions. It causes deaths. I understand the position that both sides of this facility are taking today and I appreciate them. What I'm trying to do is give you context that it's not automatic that Helenet is going to stay in business as we continue this process and this deliberation. I don't know if the process is tainted or not. That's why we have attorneys. But what I do have is 47 years of aviation experience, and I will tell you if the conditions that we operate in at Helenet do not improve, we will reach a point where we can't operate safely or effectively. So the life-saving missions that everyone has so clearly articulated here will absolutely cease to exist because we won't be able to tolerate the risk and the danger that operating in that facility presents. I invite all of you, please come to the facility. I will personally escort you and show you what we're talking about. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Our next speaker could please tell me your name and which items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Veronica Moy. I'd like to speak on all three, please. Great. Two minutes. Go ahead. Okay. Wow, this is terrifying. Um, <laughs> I'm not even looking at the majority of people back there. Um, I feel, like the gentleman bef before me, I feel for both sides. Um, your employees, you absolutely should have a safe and healthy environment to work in. But so should the tens of thousands of my neighbors. Um, I have lived in Sherman Oaks for over 10 years, last less than one year um, in Encino, and I was not supposed to be in a flight path. We did not expect that. Um, I visited the house eight, ten times, and you know, you, it's just a few minutes, you don't notice it, but when you're there constantly, it's every few minutes. And I wasn't even aware of the fume situation, and I'm just thankful I'm not in that pocket but the sounds are beyond annoying. I have to wear earplugs to go to sleep and I can still hear the planes flying over. I even during, when I'm working from home, wear earplugs just because the amount of noise increases my anxiety to the point where I've already had to increase my medication. It's, it's beyond just an annoyance. Um, it's beyond just financial. We do want the city to succeed, but does it really matter if all of us die early or have to move away because we cannot stand living here. Um, so I guess the official thing is that I am asking the LA County, uh, the City Council Travel, Trade, and Tourism Committee to please pass motion CF 231339 as is without an amendment. And I'm also asking that the Bonseth Helenet proposal be rejected 
with no contractual rights granted. Um, the city must not approve any more developments that, and this is what I want to emphasize and what all of us are emphasizing, that do not include mitigation measures to reduce air noise, um, air traffic, air pollution harming us from the airport. We do not want it shut down. We just want our lives to be more manageable. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to call a few more names. Kisela Perwin, Larry Fewerhelm, Lizzie Marcus. And if you could please tell me your name. My name is Doug Decker. And which items would you like to be heard One, on? two, and three. Doug Decker. Bear with me real quick. Mr. Decker, did you sign up? I did. Hmm. I'm not on the list. I don't see you, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give you two minutes. Go I ahead. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yes, my name is Doug Decker, and I live in uh, Lake Balboa. I just want to express my gratitude to Councilperson Padilla and express my support for both her very critical motions. I toured Helena lately, uh, recently, and I really appreciated meeting Karen, uh, Catherine and uh, Erica and a, a lot of the staff. They were wonderful. And we appreciate the services that they provide. I understand the properties languish over time, which is why City Council adopting 23-1339 is so important, so we can address policy failures that have left the current tenant without a long-term lease. I think the city needs to deny contractual rights for the lease while it explores its options for better suited developments in VNY. Thank you very much. Thank I you. yield back my time. Thank you so much. Next speaker, please tell me your name and which items you'd like to speak on. I'm Michaela Perwin, one, two, and three. All right, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Um, I'm asking that the Bonds of Helenet proposal be accepted. Um, my name is Michaela Perwin. I've been a part of Helenet since the day I was born. Alan Perwin is my dad, and he started Helenet Aviation Services when he was about the same age that I am now. He was born and raised here in Van Nuys. He never went to college, and he barely graduated from high school but he built an amazing organization that has helped thousands of people in this community since the day he opened its doors. At the very heart of Helenet as a company has always been the idea of service, service to our employees and to our community. In 1999, Judy Sharif, a CHLA transport nurse, came to my dad and asked for a helicopter to transport critical kids. She couldn't offer him a dime, and he immediately accepted, and 25 years later, Helenet still donates two dedicated full-time helicopters to CHLA on call 24-7, 365 days a year with absolutely no charge to the hospital or to the patient's families. This program has helped save over 11,000 children in the past 25 years. And if Helenet goes away, as these people cheered for, then so does that program. My dad passed in 2015, but his legacy of service and love for his community lives on through my mom and every person at Helenet. The, uh, in 2024, Charter accounts for less than 5% of our business, and the focus continues to be on critical missions that help people in our community every single day. This isn't a faceless, soulless corporation. This is a family. I've known some of these people for most of my life, if not my entire life. These are dedicated, wonderful people, and the only thing that they're asking for is a safe place and a clean place from which to work. Helenet is not expanding. We're not asking to rebuild our facility, our facility to, fuf to fulfill some corporate fantasy. As a matter of fact, that would go against everything that we've always stood for. All we want is to give our employees a safe place to work so that they can continue to provide life-saving service to the members of our community. Currently, our people have to work in a building that is falling apart around them. And we need to expand for our own people so that they can continue to do the work that they do in a safe, clean, and efficient place. Thank you. Michaela, thank you. Next speaker, please let me know your name and which items you'd like to be heard on. Larry Fuerhelm. Okay, and which items? One, two, three. You have two minutes. Go ahead. I am Larry Fearhelm, and I'm with Air Center Aviation. We are the present master leaseholder of the property where Helenet operates. I was requested by LAWA to accept Helenet as a tenant. Alan Perwin and I drafted an agreement whereby we would partner for a long-term lease. I have provided you a signed copy of that document in the package that is in front of you. In 2017, I met with Catherine Perwin to discuss Helenet's future needs. 
To my surprise, she told me she had no idea and may not even stay on the airport. Later, it became clear Lava wanted to give Helen it our property. But how could they do it? The so-called competitive RFP, that's how. The RFP was designed exactly for the result they received. Hence, one proposer, Bonset Helenet. I provided you a Lawa le inter-office letter stating that at any other airport, Air Center would have been granted a long-term lease. The RFP was not competitive. Helenet violated our agreement, and Air Center is entitled an opportunity for a new lease. I'm asking you to not recommend the RFP. And I have a few seconds to finish. I agree with a lot of things the Helenet people are saying. The facility is in need of much repair. I have been without a lease uh, for a long, long time. Thank you. Thank you so much. If our next speaker could come up, please state your name and tell me which items you'd like to speak on. Come on up. And I'm going to call a few more names. Lizzie Marcus, Marcel Melanson, Mary Grace Teneg, Michael McDaniel. Hi, my name's Al Souza. And which items? Uh, items one, two, and three. Okay, you have two minutes. Go ahead. All right. Uh, as I said, I'm uh, Al Souza. I'm the Vice President of Operations of Helenet Aviation. And July of this year, I'll celebrate my 20th anniversary with the company. Um, as many people have stated already uh, about the condition of our building, I, I want to take some of this time to clear up some of the things that I've heard uh, today from uh, the people who have spoken. Uh, two words that stand out in my mind are jets and expansion. Uh, neither of those things are happening at our company. We do not operate any jets, and we're not expanding our company. As Josh, our director of maintenance, stated earlier, we've actually uh, the, the size of our fleet has gotten smaller over the last few years. And uh, the expansion is not something that's happening. We just want to continue the work that we do in a safe, clean, habitable environment, one that anybody going to any job would take for granted. Our employees don't get to uh, have that luxury. Um, I just think that you know, if, if the people who are opposed to the project uh, if they just understood that it's not going to result in any change in jet traffic or helicopter traffic, where we're located on the airport is a perfect location for us because 90% of our flights go from our ramp eastbound to the 405 freeway, and we're flying over the freeway on our way out in and out of the airport. So we're not flying over any of the homes that are on that picture there. We're flying uh, on the other side of the airport out to the freeway and then up and down the freeway on our way to where we're going. And uh, we, again, we just want a safe, clean, habitable environment, one where we're not worried about uh, rats coming into the building and eating windshields that are on the shelf uh, that we have to throw away. We just want to come to work in a safe, uh, clean environment. Thank you. Thank you so much. If our next speaker would please come up. Tell me your name and which items you'd like to speak on, please. Hi, my name is Lizzie Marcus, and I'll be speaking on issue number three. Okay, you have one minute. Go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Lizzie Marcus, and I'm here because I'm the mother of an enthusiastic aviation-loving toddler, and I'd like to voice my strong support for the Van Nuys Airport and the critical services that Helenet provides. Our community needs more access to the world of aviation, and as a mother, I would be grateful and excited to see more facilities and interactive opportunities for our children. I have taken my son to the observation area at the airport countless times, and it needs help. Within the proposed investment, there would be $350,000 allocated to enhancing this precious space. This would be a wonderful opportunity to update and modernize facilities that will better reflect the community's values and increase the safety and efficiency of these critical operations. As a mother, I am also extremely grateful for businesses like Helenet. The services they provide, including emergency organ transportations, are essential services that save lives. Helenet's facilities are dilapidated and are in dire need of rehabilitation. Imagine the lives they could impact with modern, updated facilities to respond to emergencies more swiftly and effectively. 
I ask the council to please support these efforts. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next speaker, if you could come up, I'm going to just call a few more names who can come get in line. Marcel Melanson, Mary Grace Kenegg, Michael McDaniel, Michelle Lang, Mike Mintz, Molly Lawrence. Marcel Melanson, items one, two, and three, please. Okay, you have two minutes. Go Thank ahead. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to bring up a couple points. Uh, it was brought up about the RFP that was awarded to Helenette. And just as a reminder, that was a rigorous process that we went through. In January of 22, Helenette was awarded that process by the Board of Airport Commissioners. So I just like this body to recognize that award and the process that it went through prior to this. Also, like uh, Al Souza said, we're replacing existing, our existing footprint at Helenet. We're not expanding, we're not adding jets. I think that's a misconception that's out there. Also, a lot of the comments about fumes and flight paths, I think that's a bigger conversation and I do believe that like item one, the vision statement is necessary. However, the time it takes to create that vision statement just will not fit in the scope or available time for us to do that. And lastly, I, it was mentioned just before me, the observation area, as a Helena employee, we go out there and we see a number of families, aviation enthusiasts from all over the world come to that observation area. It's in much need of repair. And I just want to say lastly that a vote on item three, think about that observation area for a minute because it's just a small part of the RFP, but a yes vote on that RFP you're voting on the dreams of young adults or dreams of future aviators or the dreams of the next generation of aviation. Thank you. I'll yield my time. My next speaker, if you could please tell me your name and the no items you'd like to speak on. Uh, Michael McDaniel, items one, two, and three. I've been at the airport since 1997, so I've been able to support my family. I still work there today. Um, it's provided me the means to put my kids through school and food on the table and pay the mortgage. I do live in the Valley. I live in CD12. Um, I ask that you recognize the challenges with the outdated facilities uh, that affect safety, efficiency, and functionality. Um, I express the importance of modernization for this airport for the continued success for not only me, but for all the employees at the, at the airport. So. I just kindly request the support in approving all RFPs that could help, you know, improve the facilities around the airport. Um, you know, I think these RFPs is it's a step forward in securing vibrant futures for the Van Nuys community and it, it serves. Um, so I appreciate the committee's time and consideration uh, in these efforts. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next speaker, if you can come on up, I'm going to call a few more names. Nema, Jenna Tempo. Negan Navidi, Philip Pelletier, Tony Marlowe. And if you could tell me your name and the items you'd like to speak on, please. My name is Francisco, and I'd like to speak on items one and two. All right, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Okay, give me a second to start this thing here. It just locked. <clears throat> Can I get the two minutes? Yeah. That's at 145. Sorry, I, I need those 15 seconds. Okay. Uh, so first and foremost, I'm a father of three children, ages 13, 14, and 16. I was not aware that they would be growing up in a toxic environment until I was living in it. My name is Francisco. I'm a homeowner, and I'm here to speak on my experiences since purchasing this home about a decade ago. When I first arrived to this airport, it was like a sleepy airport. It wasn't that bad. My kids were small, and there were minor issues that I could live with and deal with. But in the last 10 years, there are several issues that have come up. Number one, I went to go make barbecue for my children, and I smelled kerosene before I even opened up the barbecue. And I didn't even know that that was from the jet fuel. Furthermore, the jet fuel is spewed right down my street. I have driven by when these guys are flying their uh, turbines and they're just directly going right into my street, okay? 
It's very scary. Now, in the last few years, these big jet 737s are coming through. The helicopters are nonstop, all day, all night. I mean, it's a constant just Okay, that's what we live in. And this noise, it wakes you up, it keeps you up, it doesn't let you sleep, it doesn't let you think, it doesn't let you do anything. And so, you know, by a show of hands before I go, who actually lives and works there at the same time? You live, do you guys work in this house? Okay, topic? all right. You're here to address us, your time's up. Next speaker, come on up and please tell me your name and the items you'd like to be heard on. Thank you so much. Next speaker, come on up. Hello, I'm Negi Navidi, and uh, all three items, please. Uh, all right, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Hi, committee. Thanks for having us. I'm here to support for the uh, proposed uh, for the support for the proposed uh, Bonsef Helenet lease at Van Nuys Airport. In my capacity as the vice president of accounting and finance at Helenet Aviation, I am committed to enhancing the working condition for our dedicated staff. Our current office space faces significant challenges, including inadequate airflow, structure aging, and issues such as ceiling leaks during the rainfall. It is crucial for us to address these conditions to provide a comfortable and a safe environment for our team who tirelessly contribute to the success of our organization. Again, for the hundred times, it is important to note that our subject, uh, our objective is not to expand our operation, but but rather to invest in improving the well-being of our employees. These individuals work tirelessly, operating 24-7, 365 days uh, a year to facilitate the transportation of organs and clinically ill children. It's not charters. The charter is a very small percentage of our operation. Their commitment to having that mission of transporting children at no cost to their families resonated deeply with me. By supporting the proposed lease, um, we can contribute to the betterment of our working conditions uh, in and in turn continue our vital mission of saving lives and supporting affected families. I'm proud to be associated with Helena Aviation Services, a company that prioritizes both the well-being of its employees and the noble mission of aiding those in needs. I kindly urge you to consider and support the proposed lease, recognizing the positive impact it will have on our organization's ability to carry out its important uh, work. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. While our next speaker comes up, I'm gonna call a few names. Some of these I've already called. Liz Garcia, Mary Grace Teneg, Michelle Lang, Mike Mintz, Molly Lorenz, Nema Genetempo. Hi, what's your name, please? Philip Pelletier. Thank you, and what would you like to be heard on? Uh, one, two, and three. All right, you have two minutes, go ahead. Thank you. Honorable council members, my name is Philip Pelletier. I'm a systems technician for Helenet Aviation. I help to maintain the microwave downlink systems used by law enforcement for tracking and surveillance in the name of public safety. Uh, I do the same for the systems that transmit cutting edge broadcast footage to millions of viewers daily. When I started at Helenet, I was basically a janitor. Being interested in other facets of the company, Catherine Perwin saw potential in me and gave me an opportunity uh, that ultimately changed my life for the better and carved a path for me I am truly proud of. Helena Aviation is a firm advocate of growth and development, and I'm a prime example of that. Uh, not to mention all the life-saving missions Helenet performs, I wholeheartedly support the Bonds of Helenet proposal. A new facility would create opportunities for individuals not unlike myself. Um, I spent the last two days fixing water damage and rearranging my office to avoid a massive water leak from the ceiling instead of assisting my law enforcement customers uh, to protect their cities. Um, please accept this proposal. Thank you. All right, next speaker, if you could come up and let me know your name and the items you want to speak on, and I'm going to call a few more names. Mary Grace Teneg, Michelle Lang, Mike Mintz, Molly Lorenz, Nama Jenna Tempo, Stuart Waldman, I believe we already heard from, Tony Marlowe, Ty Evans, Victor Lee. All right, what's your name? Uh, Ty Evans. All right. One, two, and three. All right, Mr. Evans, you have two minutes. Go ahead. Good afternoon. I'd like to share this. This was me walking into my office Monday morning. This is a wall 
this is the floor. This is water seeping in through the floor. This is not coming from the ceiling. This is what we're dealing with. I work next to Phil. Phil walks in. His desk was covered with water coming down. I want to be clear. We do not own the property. There is a landlord that is in charge of this. Hello. My name is Ty Evans. I'm the director of production at Hellinet. I'm a father, husband, and homeowner here in District 6. I'm reaching out today in support of the Brofus Hellinet lease at 16303 Waterman Drive at the Van Nuys Airport. I've been involved with Hellinet for over a decade, a decade of saving lives, supporting families, and bringing income into a community. I often look up into the sky and see the Children's Hospital helicopter flying by and know the impact that it is having. Hellinet saves lives. I'm currently work writing this letter in a 15-year I'm currently writing this letter in a 52-year-old building that has rainwater dripping from the ceilings, rats in the walls, and a landlord that refuses to fix any of these issues. I look forward to the day that I can focus on my job and not spend time on stacking sandbags so that our office does not leak or putting down pans to catch water from a leaking roof. We are not asking for expansion. We are asking for a safe and clean working environment. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to run down this list one more time. Bear with me. Liz Garcia. All right, Mr. what's your name? Uh, Victor Lee. All right, Mr. Lee, what would you like to be heard on? Items one, two, and three. All right, you have two minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, the TTT, as well as the city council member and the committee. Um, my name is Victor Lee. I was born and raised here in Los Angeles. I spent most of my childhood uh, throughout the San Fernando Valley uh, and have many good memories. Uh, the items that I want to really convey to the committee and to the council members is just my observation. Uh, I've been associated with uh, Helenet Aviation Services for eight years. Uh, in different uh, roles and capacities. And what I've come to observe over this period of time is as the aircraft, the cockpits and cabins take on more technology, such as computers and electronics, in order to maintain uh, these devices and equipment at the highest level of safety, it requires an environment for the maintenance team as well as our technicians, who you just heard from Phil, to be able to di use diagnostic equipment where their, visual, where their vision is not impaired and they are not affected by the elements, such as the extreme heats of the summer uh, and the downpours that we're seeing annually. So from a safety perspective, as our president mentioned, uh, Mr. Norton, uh, my concern, if this proposal is not approved, is the distraction that the Helenet employees needs to operate in. And one thing for certain is Helenet is resilient, and despite what decisions made, will do their best to continue their life-saving missions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to call a few final names here. Liz Garcia, going once, going twice. Jose A, going once, going twice. Mary Grace Teneg, going once, going twice. Ms. Gutierrez, just give me a minute. Michelle Lang, going once, going twice. Mike Mintz. Molly Lorenz. Nema Genitempo. Okay. Um, Ms. Gutierrez, before I give you the floor as our final commenter, I just want to ask, is there anyone else here who wishes to give public comments? All right, come and, come and get in line. I don't see your name on the queue, but I want to give you time. Ms. Gutierrez, are you ready? Yeah, uh, before I begin, I just want to hand out these uh, handouts to someone. Okay. Um, in your hand, you'll right, be evidence. On. Okay, hold on one second. And just, this is... Really, truly, for folks who want to be heard on any of these items, this is last call. I'm going to close public comment. All right, Ms. Gutierrez, you want to be? 
Great. What do yes. you want to be heard on? All right, just real quick. In your hand, there will be evidence that the current tenant does meet his obligations as landlord and clarification. All right, I'm going to start you with two contracts. minutes. Go Great. ahead. Excellent. My name is Suzanne Gutierrez. I'm a 21-year resident of Lake Balboa and live right next to the Van Nuys Airport in The Pocket. And here is my family. I clearly, I support both motion, clearly, I support both motions and ask for the rejection of Bonds of Helenet as its proposal proves to be in the best interest of the investors and not the city. There is no doubt that the Waterman property needs upgrades because Lawa has failed both the master tenant and his subtenants but de by denying the tenant ability to invest in the property. That is Lawa's fault, and it's gone for on over 15 years. Also, I handed out an email earlier today from Alicia Avery, a Van Nuys CAC member who is out of town. She recently took a tour of Helenet, and her email states that after reading Helenet's staff comments online, she was very disappointed to read gross exaggerations of the property's condition based on her visit. Half-truths and exaggerations do not help. I appreciate the medical professionals who came out to defend Helenet. However, as a mother, I am too concerned about children's health, including my own. All children matter, and as Timmy pointed out, Helena is not being forced out. They choose to leave in a tantrum because city council does not does the right thing by rejecting this proposal and protecting the city's interests, thus allowing options for a better suited project. Then they do so at their own will, and this committee should not be bullied or manipulated by the exploitation of children's hospital or, or any other institution. I find that tactic very shameless. Bottom line, the city must take responsibility for the severe public nuisance seriously harming valley dwellers and employees by ensuing developments actually do modernize the property, not just meet Calgary's requirements and bring Van Nuys into a sustainable future. The fact uh, that toxic APU em emissions could have been reduced at Van Nuys over 20 years ago, but Lawa failed to mandate that upgrade in the development deals and outrageous and demonstrates how dire the adoption of 23-1339 is. And thank you, Councilwoman Padilla, and thank you, Councilwoman Park. You are very welcome. We have one final speaker, if you'd like to come up and tell me your name. Oh, um, and Ms. Gutierrez, you left your photo. There you go. What's your name? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Christopher Rubalcava, and I'm here to speak on one, two, three. Okay, you've got two minutes. Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. I am the avionics supervisor for Helen Aviation. Uh, I've been working at the Van Nuys Airport for roughly about three years. I've uh, worked previously at LAX, Long Beach, uh, multiple military facilities. Um, the place where I work at right now is uh, truthfully embarrassing for aviation. Um, it's embarrassing for the Van Nuys Airport to have such outdated um, facilities that do not meet our needs. Um, also, I want to touch about, I heard a lot about APUs, auxiliary power units. None of our helicopters have auxiliary power units. We do not have jets, and we're not expanding. Um, as well, as the lady before me mentioned, somebody came and uh, did an assessment of our facility. Just like some of these people were not able to assess their properties next to the airport and a few visits, I don't understand how this lady was able to assess our installation with one visit. This is not something that you see in a sunny day once. This is things that prolong themselves through um, my daily routines uh, at this facility. And it's something that you might not notice at the first, uh, first time. There's so many things um, that are going wrong within that facility that are completely unacceptable, um, including the rain, including the storms, including the heat, including the cold. Uh, I believe this facility is in dire need of upgrades to modernize this to the 21st century. The, the hangars that we have, again, are very unacceptable and do not meet the standards of other people along the lines of us, Sun Air Jets, uh, Castle Cook, uh, Western Jet, Clay Lacey. Everybody seems to be able to take care of their employees very well, um, but Helena is not being allowed to do so. I have two children of my own. Uh, working in aviation is a very dangerous business, and I had to be told that I will not have a safer work environment because people cannot light a, a match in their, in their backyard or keep people having um, trouble smelling these fumes. Uh, I understand where they're coming from. I've been smelling these fuels for 10 plus years myself because I work in aviation. However, this is a safety concern, not um, expanding, no jets, no auxiliary power units. This is my safety for my family and my uh, able to take care of them financially and physically. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I just want to note that we have taken well over two hours of public comments. It was my desire today to hear from everybody who wished to be heard on this matter. I'm going to take one last call. 
if there is anybody that wishes to be here, heard on item three or any other item on the agenda, this really truly is it, last call. Three, two, one. Okay, with that, thank you all so much for making the time to be with us today and to share your thoughts um, with us. Um, I am going to conclude public comment and we will move on with the substance of our meeting now. Uh, unless there is any objection from my colleagues, I would like to move items 4 through 11 on consent. No objections? Can we have 9 special separate vote, please? Sure. We will take 9 for a separate vote. All right. Well, that will bring us to item um, number... Oh, sorry. I need to call the roll on items 4 to 11. Sorry about that. Thank you. Can we do that, please? Uh, well... Four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, and eleven, please. Council Member Park? Yes. Council Member McCosker? Yes. Council Member Soto Martinez? Yes. Okay, now let's do item number nine. If you could please read item nine for us. Item nine is a Board of Harbor Commissioners report relative to a 22nd amendment to contract uh, between the Port of Los Angeles and Motorola Solutions for uh, radio systems. Okay, if you would call the roll on item nine, please. Park? Yes. McCosker? Yes. Soto Martinez? No. <coughs> Two items, the items approved. Okay, thank you very much. So let's move on then to item number one. Mr. Clerk, would you please read the item? Item number one is a motion, Padilla Raman, relative to instructing Los Angeles World Airports and the Department of City Planning to prepare a report on the Van Nuys Airport Vision Study. Okay, thank you very much. Colleagues, unless there are any objections, I would move that we approve item one. No objections. No objections? All right, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Park? Yes. McCosker? Yes. Soto Martinez? Yes. Three ayes and the items approved. Great, that brings us to item number two. Mr. Clerk, if you would please read the item. Item two is a motion, Padilla Raman, relative to instructing LAWA and city planning to convene the necessary citizens advisory committee meetings that will uh, serve, the, serve to provide input during all phases of the development process of the Van Nuys Pacific Plan. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Once again, unless there are any objections from my colleagues, I would move that we con we would concur with the Planning and Land Use Management Committee report and approve item two. Any objections? None. All right, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Park? Yes. McCosker? Yes. Soto Martinez? Yes. Three ayes. Okay, great. Concur. Now that brings <coughs> us to item number three. Mr. Clerk, if you would, please call the roll. Item so sorry, oh. sorry. <laughs> we need to call the roll yet. How about we um, read the item? Item three is a Board of Commissioners report relative to a proposed <laughs> lease for up to 25 years between Lawa and Bonsif Helenet LLC for the potential redevelopment of land and existing facilities at 16231 Waterman Drive at Van Nuys. All right, thank you so much for that. Um, colleagues, before we move into our presentation from Lawa, I actually have uh, Question or two for our city attorney, if you wouldn't mind joining us. Thank you. Um, so I understand that there has been a threat of litigation made about this, and I'm wondering if you could tell us how that may impact our deliberations here today. Well, if you're asking whether we can go into closed session on that, the answer is no, unfortunately, because the threat of litigation, which came from the Manat firm both by letter and orally today. Uh, it did occur after the posting of the agenda, and there may be a need to consider it. However, Rule 64 and the corresponding government code only allows us to essentially add something in the agenda like that uh, during a regular meeting. This is a special meeting, and therefore we're not allowed to do it. Um, if this goes to council, there could be closed session, but there cannot be today. Okay. So I just want to make sure I'm hearing and understanding correctly. I don't have any ability to call a closed session today for us to address those issues or any other legal questions in closed session. That is correct. But we would have the opportunity potentially to call a closed session involving the full city council, right? Yes. Okay. And we can agendize it as such. Okay. Um, 
those are the questions that I wanted to ask, I, but I wanted to give my colleagues an opportunity before I bring law with there are any questions for our city attorney that you'd like to address first. Madam Chair? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. McCosker. I do want to address 606 of the charter briefly. We've heard the argument uh, 606 uh, tells us uh, that the self-executing application of charter provision 606 tells us that essentially there's nothing here before us. Does the city attorney have any it, any response in public session that you can give? Uh, yes. I mean, as you know, I normally don't like stating legal conclusions in public, but I think this one is so clear under the black letter of the charter, I'm quite comfortable doing it. So section 606 says that there's 30 days to act after the submittal of the matter to council. This matter was not submitted to council until two days ago. So when Mr. Young in the public comment said that upon the board action, the clock started to click tick, that is incorrect. The clock, the 30-day clock did not start to, start to tick until two days ago. Um, the clerk following normal course has noted that the last day to act would be March 7th, which is a Thursday. So functionally, the last day for council to act is Wednesday, March 6th. And I don't want to interrupt you, but so my understanding is this was transmitted a couple of days ago to the council file. We are within our 30-day period, and we do have the ability. That is absolutely correct. All right. Thank you, Mr. McCos Mr. City Attorney. Mr. McCosker, go ahead. I just want to also briefly respond to the what was suggested as a parallel between two, Section 245 and 606 and just get your assessment of this. And I think you've already, I think you've already told me how this is going to come out. Under Section 606, the timing it begins, the clock begins at submittal to council, whatever that means. Correct. And submittal is something that I would probably investigate in closed session as to what is the defined term. So 30 days after submittal to council, and every bit of information I have is that it was submitted a couple of days ago. Section 245, also self-executing, says that actions of boards and commissions shall become final actions actions the active word here is the actions of the board and I know that's been defined over time by the city attorney's office what is an action there is no requirement in section 245 for submittal to the council we are deemed to know what action occurs and then the clock begins and according to a very convoluted set of rules understandably uh, the council has to act there is no requirement for a submittal under 245 there is expressly a requirement for a submittal under 606 you are absolutely correct. I think you've answered your own question um, regarding the difference between the two sections. Right. That's right. Um, this is not a case of 245 with assertion of jurisdiction. This is the lease that's coming before you where the clock starts ticking per the black letter law of section 606 after submittal. And having, and I actually, I heard this comment during the public comment about the importance of having served on the commission, the Charter Revision Commission. I served on that commission. I remember this discussion. This discussion was Section 245 is so extraordinary, it replaced Section 5, by the way, the old Prop 5, excuse me. Section 245 is so significant that we're saying any action below can be taken up, and so we have to reach down and grab it mm -hmm. because it, it could be anything from a parking meter to a, uh, it can't be a lease because a lease that, uh, that is going to come to us automatically, by the way, but it can be anything from a small matter to a large matter. Section 606 was really designed to put the council in the position that if we were going to be encumbering property for more than five years, it needs to be transmitted to us. And then once transmitted to us, we can't sit on our rights. Then we have to spend some time, get it on the agenda, but we can't spend too much time. So the transmittal was absolutely imperative to the, to the effectiveness of 606, uh, and, and that's different from 245. I think that's exactly right, and that's why it is exceedingly clear that it says after submittal in Section 606 for exactly the reasons you've stated. Thanks. That's enough for me. Right. I guess that wasn't a question. <laughs> Mr. Soto Martinez, do you have any questions? No questions right now. Okay. Hold on one second. All right. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. I am going to, do we have representatives from LAWA? Mr. Adams, are you here? If you could please come on up. And we'd like to hear from you in your presentation now.
All right, if you could just make some introductions and then we'll turn the floor over to you. Good afternoon, council members. Can you hear me? Am I live? Yes. Great. Uh, I'm Mike Christensen. I'm Assistant General Manager of LAWA. And I'm joined here by um, Mark Adams from our Governmental Affairs Unit. And we have a few things to give you towards this. We appreciate this uh, forum and we appreciate your patience. Uh, before you today is a request to approve a new ground lease for a potential, and I underli underline the term potential, redevelopment of the property located at 16231 Waterman Drive in Van Nuys Airport. And I need to emphasize that this is a potential redevelopment. And the reason I need to emphasize this is the proposed lease does not guarantee any redevelopment and initially only provides the new tenant the property and the contractual rights necessary to pursue the entitlements and seek approval of the proposed project. Uh, since 1972, the property has been leased to the same entity through a series of consecutive leases to Air Center. I believe you heard from them earlier today. The most recent lease was extended by the Board of Airport Commissioners in 2018, specifically to allow time to release a request for proposals for a new lease because it had been over 50 years since there was a competitive solicitation on this particular property. Now, the existing facilities have all, and I think you've heard a lot of this today, have all exceeded their useful life, and they are in need of replacement. Now, Los Angeles World Airports uh, released a, uh, an RFP for the potential redevelopment of the site. They selected Bonsef, Helenet LLC, and I need to say that this whole process was thoroughly reviewed and approved by the city attorney. And then subsequently, on December the 1st, 2022, the Board of Airport Commissioners voted to approve the lease for the pro potential redevelopment of the site. Now, Bonsef Helena's proposal is to replace the existing outdated facilities with new, modern, and sustainable facilities. And uh, the community benefit I think you've heard about is the uh, renovating the nearby Van Nuys observation area. Now, the proposed lease does not authorize construction of any proposed improvements. Really important to state here. After approval of a lease, Bonsef Helenet may advance development of the design and start work to secure all of the appropriate approvals and entitlements. Now, these entitlements, of course, would include all necessary environmental review on the specifics where the analysis of all impacts would be included. The lease provides a five-year period where Bonsef Helenet would secure these entitlements and permits and then complete all the approved construction. If the project is not approved, if the entitlements are not received uh, during this period and the project is uh, delivered, by the fifth year, the lease will terminate. If the project is approved and the site is, re is redeveloped, by the fifth year, the lease will be extended by 20 years to the full 25-year term. We're glad to uh, accept any questions you have. Uh, uh, we'll attempt to give you the answers on those. Sure. Thank you so much. Um, I have a few questions. So does the lease allow for the storage and parking of jets in any way? Um, it would, yes. But I think, as was mentioned, the charter section of the business right now is, is only a small element of what they do. But yes, it would. But, but the lease does allow for that. It would, but the use of uh, aviation use on that property is, is really regulated by the FAA more than it would be by us. And, and the lease, Mark Adams, the, and the lease, uh, we're not allowed to restrict, restrict the lease in that way under um, FAA uh, regulations. Okay, so there's a wide range of aviation usage, including storage and parking of jets that could be permitted under this lease. That's correct, Councilwoman. So I genuinely believe that Helenet has a great story and they offer an absolutely critical service that benefits our entire city. So let me ask you this. Regardless of our action today, would the existing lease 
and Telenet's operations have the opportunity to continue? Um, Councilwoman, the, it's important to note that the lease, current lease is expired and it's been expired for quite a while. So the current tenant, master tenant and subtenants are there on a month to month basis. And for that reason and presumably others, there are, there was no reluctant or no uh, interest in investing in that property. Thus, it would be impractical to think that there would be any significant improvements unless a lease were granted. And of course, uh, we have, we are constrained through charter and other rules that we have to go through a very prescribed process to issue that lease, which is what we in essence did. So that puts the, that puts a tough position to put any improvements on that site. I understand your concern about the improvements. I just want to be clear that the status quo of them being a month-to-month -month tenant does not change. They can remain month-to-month -month for as long as they want to, yes. And to clarify, Air Center, as the primary leaseholder, would remain the month-to-month -month tenant, and Helenet would remain a subtenant to Air Center under that agreement. Okay. So... Mr. Adams, I just want to make sure I have this. So Helenet could still operate on this site, even if this lease was rejected today by this committee, while the city determines what the appropriate next steps are to take. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I'd like to give my colleagues an opportunity to ask some questions. Mr. Stone Martinez, I'm going to start with you this time. Oh, wow. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Uh, well, well, first of all, let me start off by... Just everyone who came here today, regardless on one side of the of this issue you were at, um, I want to say thank you for coming, for taking time out of your day to make your voice heard. Uh, I know Councilmember Padilla is not here, uh, or maybe she's listening in, but I also want to thank her for really pushing and challenging us to to do more meetings on this side of town. This is now the the third meeting we have, uh, I think, in the last month. And I think that's always good because uh, we get to hear from people and the concerns that are, you know, uh, more prevalent to this geographical area. So I do want to thank her and her staff for, for doing that. So you answered my, the most important question that I had. Uh, 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 Madam Chair uh, Park asked that. Um, so can I just, I, I, so there's a, people expressed a lot of frustration uh, about this project. Um, and this is should come to no surprise. Uh, you know, I think we've we've uh, when folks feel not included or excluded or not part of the process, oftentimes we get these reactions. But can can you just describe how much outreach was done uh, to the to this community uh, before or during this entire process? Because it sounds like it was very little. Mark, would you like to take that? Yeah. On, th on this specific lease, there was, um, at the time this went to our board in 2022, there was a mischaracterization in the staff report um, of the amount of outreach had been done. And so we, after that, um, the board deferred the item at its um, October board meeting. And so between October and November, we did some work uh, reaching out to the community because we would, our normal procedures now are to go to our Citizens Advisory Council and other um, community outreach. Uh, between the time that the lease award has been determined for a particular uh, tenant and the approval of the airport commission. And that was not done in this case mm -hmm. initially. And that was, mis as I said, mischaracterized in our original board report. But we um, did take it to the um, community to describe the uh, elements of the Bonds of Helen at least between that October date and that um, uh, the, uh, the December uh, approval. Mm -hmm. okay. I think none the, nonetheless, um, I think this is why we find ourselves in this situation. Um, you know, why there's a lot of emotions on, on, on both sides. Um, you know, as someone, uh, you know, I represent District 13, and we have the Children's Hospital in, in, in my district. Uh, I've toured that facility, and I know that's not all the, that uh, Bonsef Helenet does. I know that's a part of their, their work. But, uh, you know, when you see uh, 
children that go into surgery, open heart surgery, um, at a very young age, sometimes as soon as they're born, and you see those babies uh, and the service that, that this company is providing uh, to the Children's Hospital, it's, it's very moving. Um, and so I, I thank the, the, this employer for, for doing that. Um, so I don't, I personally don't want, uh, I think the service is a good service, uh, among other things that they're doing. It also brings jobs and so many other things. So I'm glad we're not in a position where we can affect that business. It sounds like we could go month to month. Uh, that would be at least at the very least something we can do. Um, but I am, I am really bothered by the lack of community input that was put into this process. Um, uh, we've seen time to time this committee go beyond what I think is necessary. Uh, you know, Council Member Park has done an amazing job with Lulu's place. You know, uh, I know that was like a lot of input. I did a lot of input when we've done some uh, stuff to the Echo Park Lake uh, Park. You know, and so I think that's really important. So, if if there's a way we can find an opportunity, a window where we can allow the community's voice to be heard. Um, before moving forward, I think that's where that's where I would land. Um, and look, and if if we do the outreach, and people are still opposed to it, I, I can live with that and make a decision as a council member. But the fact that they were not, that they they felt they are feeling excluded, that that doesn't sit well with me, um, because I think people have to have that opportunity. But uh, since we haven't had it, it's it find it really difficult for me to to try to support. The way it, the way it's being presented now. But Thank you, Councilman. I appreciate your concern. I do want to um, uh, point out that partly because of the concerns over this specifically, we have redefined our public engagement proposal, and future leases will be done in a more uh, in with, with more community engagement, with more community coordination with our citizens advisory council and other that we've committed to that going forward. Unfortunately, um, that was not the case with this specific iter um, instance. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Adams. I, I really appreciate you saying that. Cause I think it's I think it's something that personally I ran on a lot. You know, just getting people involved, even if it's a controversial issue. Um, because what I find is that even if it's controversial, we actually have a lot. There's a lot of common ground, uh, and when there's common ground, you can build off of the common ground. Uh, but since that uh, wasn't there, uh, it's concerning. But I appreciate you sort of stating the, the change in direction that they were going with community uh, engagement. And council member, we have a relatively new board of airport commissioners uh, hierarchy. We have a new president as of last summer. We are hearing exactly the same directive from our, from our newly constituted board as well. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, council member Soto Martinez. Mr. McCosker, do you have questions for Lawa? I do, thank you, just a few. Um, so the so this um, applicant is sitting on a month-to-month -month sublease, essentially. So oh, the, is, the yeah. master, the lessee, is on a month-to-month. -month. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. And we've heard, and so the so by operation by necessity, then the subtenant can't have anything more than the master tenant has. So they're so the, they're on a month-to-month. -month. Um, who's Whose responsibility is it to maintain habitable property? Airport, master tenant, sub master tenant, tenant, master tenant, master tenant. Does the port? Does the airport? I ask because the port is something on my mind every day about this very issue. Actually, does the port have a, a leasing policy that that you can rely on? That where you have. Uh, the occasional, I hope only occasional, month-to-month tenancy that goes on for a long time, that we actually have habitable conditions? Um, that's a good question, Council Member. I'll have to get back to you on that specific element of our lease policy. We do have this problem, though, that I see widespread uh, at the airport where leases go month-to-month. -month. We try to avoid that when we can because the same thing occurs in many of those instances. Right, right. So you'll get back to us on... On, you, we know whose responsibility it is for habitability and for usability of the site, uh, but we, we are not sure if we have a policy or something we rely on to require some basic maintenance of our property in the end, our property, when someone's on a month-to-month. -month. Yes, I'll get you a copy of that yeah. lease policy that yeah. applies to that. Because whether it's a month-to-month -month or 25 years, at the end, 
it's probably ours unless there's some language that says they have to remove the facilities. So that the problems become ours, ours collectively, the airport department. I, I want to go to the environmental review. I was uh, curious. Um, I, I think I heard your answer that this is was considered categorically exempt because it was a, a, a review of an RFP, um, and the award of the RFP, you know, comes with a five-year lease term and a 20-year extension. But, but I think what you said was that the lease itself would would tell us uh, that no improvements can be made until they get approval from us, and that's when you do an environmental review if there was if there were impacts that needed to be mitigated or assessed or overridden? Um, council member, they would need to do an environmental review in order to, they would have to develop their project, then they would have to put that through all the entitlement environmental review along with the permitting, because they also have to obtain permits from yeah. the city of LA for whatever they're doing or other permitting agencies. And it's not until they get all those entitlements of permits that they could proceed with the actual construction. I guess I'm gonna push back on the categorical exemption couldn't couldn't we anticipate that a, that awarding a, a winner of a five year lease with defined expectations for what they would do at, with the site would allow us as decision makers and by decision makers I'm talking about the BOAC uh, to evaluate those environmental impacts and and wouldn't that require some at least a mitigated negative declaration. Um, Council Member, you, you're speaking of the lease itself as opposed to the construction? I'm speaking about the lease. Yeah, what yes. the lease would allow. I mean, I'm talking about what we, in the end, are going to allow use of the property for, which might create an impact. We grant a lease. We know people aren't going to enter into a lease if they're not going to use the property. And you also said that there's, there are limited things we can do because of FAA regulations on saying no to certain uses. So at that very moment, we know something's going to happen. Why don't we do the environmental review at the front end? Um, I could give you one reason, and that's because we don't know what the project looks like. And because we don't know what the project looks like, we can't really determine the exact environmental impact. Beyond that, I think I'd have to defer to our city attorney. Doesn't the project look like the RFP response? Um, it may or it may not. It may or may not. It, well, actually, the CEQA would tell us it may or may not is then you, then you analyze the may and figure the may not is a, a, a lesser included impact. I, I hear what you're saying, but I think I'd have to defer to our city attorney on right. that one. Right, okay. Um, so what is the airport's position on when it was transmitted to the city council? I believe we're consistent with what Chair, Chairperson Park said over the dais here a minute ago. So it was transmitted two days ago. Two days ago, and you expressly cited 606 and said, hey, council members, get going. Here it is. Correct. And we, we make an attempt to, when we transmit, make sure we're not transmitting it into a dead period for the city council. So Right, we, not into sure a dead period like one council leaving, another council coming in, like one council having a first meeting of uh, uh, on December 15th and then breaking for three weeks and then ceasing the document to people who are no longer council members? You mean that? Precisely. We you try we, not to do that? We, we are not going to do that. We, yeah. simply we, we not try not to that. transmit during recess periods. Um, and, or to, and you probably try to transmit to actual council right. members. Right. And, it, well, and in this particular instance, what we, we wanted to wait until, since the lease was approved in December 2022 and there was no council member in CD6 at yeah. that time, we wanted to wait at least until there was a new council member in place in CD6, which wasn't until the following July. Thank you. That's actually, you answered the next question I was going to ask. I'm, I think I'm done. Really? Okay. Well, <sighs> colleagues, this has been a lot. And I know that each of you and your staffs have put a lot of time and thought into this. And as I shared at the outset, I want to thank everybody who made time to be here today. Our city staff bringing this production on the road to Van Nuys is a big commitment of our time and resources. But it was, again, really important to me that we be here in Van Nuys for today's discussion. I also want to thank LAWA for their hard work and, again, the patience and the partnership on this. 
I want to thank Councilwoman Padilla for the time that she was able to give us today in this hearing. And I also want to thank the community. I know that you all have waited for today's hearing and the opportunity to be heard on this for a very long time. And whether you gave public comment today in support or opposition to this pro proposal, I want you to know that your voice does matter and it was heard by all of us on this committee. I also want to thank the Helenet team. It is abundantly clear from the emails, the letters, and the public comment, in particular, the comments from Children's Hospital LA, that you provide an invaluable service to our city, organ transport, public safety response jobs. Your mission should not be interrupted, regardless of today's action. With that said, I do have some concerns about this proposed lease, and I remember during the height of the pandemic reading and hearing about the large increase in charter jets flying in and out of Van Nuys Airport and the unfortunate impacts that had on the surrounding community. Potent fumes that prevented parents from letting their kids play outside, poor air quality because of the increased particulate matter, as well as noise at all times of day. And we certainly heard those concerns re reiterated here today. I also understand that federal rules tie our hands when it comes to dealing with airport operations, and that is certainly a challenge that I've dealt with at LAX. However, this was a lease that was negotiated with some activities permitted and others prohibited, and I appreciate Law was acknowledgement that there wasn't adequate community engagement around this one, and I do applaud the efforts to change that going forward. In spite of the community's concern and opposition to the charter jet traffic, what we have is a lease in front of us that could enable that activity via some of the proposed permitted activities. We have to be intentional about modernization and development at Van Nuys Airport. And that means, in my view, having a holistic framework that addresses growth concerns, environmental concerns that we heard about today, air quality, noise, fumes, and community concerns. Earlier today, we took action that will create that holistic framework, which I believe will be a good guide to development moving forward. So for these reasons, and based on the totality of the record that I have in front of me, I cannot support the proposal, and I would re recommend that we reject the lease. However, I want to support Helenette's important work, which is why I would like to add the following instruction. Request LAWA to work with and maintain Helenet's subtenancy while the future of this site is reassessed. Any other comments or input from my colleagues? Yeah, I'll, I'll say, yeah, I, thank you so much, Madam Chair. I, I think you you captured my sentiment uh, maybe more eloquently, eloquently than I can, and I, 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 I thank you for, for your words. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, with that, then, I move that we reject item three with the additional instruction that LAWA work with and maintain Helenet's subtenancy while the future of this site is reassessed. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Park? Yes. Councilmember Cosker? Yes. Councilmember Soto Martinez? Yes. All right, thank you so much. Um, Mr. Clerk, is there anything else before us today? That clears the desk. All right, thank you again to all of our community members who took the time to be with us today. We appreciate it. This meeting is adjourned. Great, great work.